Uh, sir, we have uh, students joining in. Uh, some more students are supposed to join, sir. We have already reminded. We'll wait for another five more minutes, sir. Is it okay? So around the 78 uh, students are there, around 80. I think uh, you can go ahead and start, sir, if you're uh, ready. Hello, sir, can you hear me? Sir, you have to unmute yourself. Your mic is muted.
Uh, no, sir, we can't hear you. I think your mic is still muted. Please unmute your mic, sir. Commander, sir, uh, your mic is still muted. We are not able to hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now we can right. hear can you. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. We can great, hear great, you. Great, great, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll just, uh, yeah. I'll just give a brief introduction, sir, about you uh, to our students. Maybe some students have joined for the first time. All right, sir. Okay. Very good afternoon, uh, students. And uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, sir. Uh, Commander Himanshu Joshi, sir. Uh, students, we are really lucky to have today uh, Commander Himanshu Joshi uh, to give a presentation on introduction and uh, presentation skills. Uh, Professor Commander Joshi is a visiting faculty at DSU and he is also founder of uh, Vodamula Productivity Solutions Private Limited. He is uh, adjunct faculty at DSU and he has been a veteran, uh, uh, he has been uh, with Indian Navy. So I'm very sure he's got a whole lot of uh, experience behind him when he's talking about this particular topic, which, which is very important for you when you go for interview or uh, when you're in corporate meeting new people. So without much ado, I invite you, sir. Uh, please go ahead, uh, uh, Commander Rahman sir. The mic over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, welcome to you all, uh, my fellow students. Uh, 
some of you may have attended uh, my earlier session which uh, was uh, which happened on i think i guess 28th or 29th all right and that was a long extended session of about 2 hours in which we had primarily covered uh, uh, we talked about communication uh, as a process what communication is what is the need for communication and how our normal communication that we uh, do on a regular basis is different from business communication uh, now uh, let me uh, you know for the benefit of those who are attending this session uh, a second time uh, or who had attended the previous uh, session uh, this will be a kind of a recall of what we uh, studied in the previous uh, session and for those who are joining for the first time it will be a, a kind of icebreaker uh, for you to figure out what we are talking about and <clears throat> you know uh, when we talk about introducing self it uh, relates to an entity self could be me it could be the organization that i represent right so uh, my aim out here is to make you people appreciate that it is not just uh, the human it is not just the person uh, it is uh, it could be a non living entity who is uh, also communicating and who feels that there is a need for introduction at some point right and uh, in this particular session of course the first few slides will be more uh, refresher uh, for those who have uh, attended earlier and as i said an icebreaker for those people who uh, are doing it for the first time we'll talk a little about personality we'll talk about the uh, meaning of self in business communication we will uh -huh. Sir, Commander, sir, can I interrupt for a minute? Yes, most certainly, sir. Uh, sir, your presentation is not being presented. Can you? Uh, I think you'll have to start all over again. All right. Okay, sir. Hmm. Present now. A window. All right. Is it visible now, sir? No, oh, not yet, sir. Not yet. Not yet? Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, it's loading up, sir. No. Yeah, it's now it is visible, sir. Now. Great, great. Yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. Uh, so now it is visible. Yes, sir. The presentation is visible now clearly. Great. So, what I was talking about was, uh, ladies and gentlemen that we will be talking about introducing self in uh, in the sense that the self can be any entity it could be you it could be the organization that you represent and of course uh, it could be uh, you know uh, for the purpose of promoting uh, your business interest or for the pro purpose of promotion of yourself as a person in profession or socially in this particular session i am going to uh, run a few slides which will act as a refresher for those who had attended my previous session and then uh, it will also be a kind of icebreaker for those people who are attending it for the first time then we'll talk about personality a little bit then we'll talk about the meaning or the meaning of the term self in business communication or in communication um, then we'll talk about the need uh, and the ways in which businesses introduce themselves and the need for individuals to introduce themselves and how to go about doing it right <clears throat> now as i had talked about earlier that uh, you know communication is a process in which there is a sharing of views and ideas and facts and data and everything between two entities two entities could be not necessarily uh, 
uh, human entities it could be human as well as non human entities all right and <clears throat> the essence is that we need to understand that communication is a process and that there is a target there is a source there is some information which needs to be shared which is called the content and then there is some medium over which the content is delivered that the intention behind this is to change the behavior of the receiver that is the target so this target uh, becomes uh, the receiver uh, of your communication uh, the source of your communication of course is uh, let me okay yeah source is the sender or you whoever feels the need to uh, initiate the communication target is the receiver okay medium is it could be anything as of now like we are talking we are talking over a medium which is a uh, you know shared in uh, multi dimensions in the sense that i am talking on the uh, in front of my uh, laptop Uh, the entire communication is getting coded at some place uh, you know from human language it is going into some sort of a machine language then um, you know it's getting transmitted over the waves transmitted over the net and then it is being received at your end again in the form of machine language and then from there it is getting converted at the moment all right so that you please tell me whether you are um, able to listen to me uh, clearly anyone anyone can respond yes sir it's audible clearly yes great okay and i hope you are trying to understand also and some this whatever i am saying is making some sense yeah sir great so that becomes my feedback okay fb over here is feedback not facebook which i as the source so my communication is complete so this is what the process is there was a need there is a professional need in in our case in today's case there is a professional need okay that the university feels that the uh, uh, session must be conducted for the students so that was the first communication between the university and me okay it was conveyed to me okay then i have or i am at the moment in the process of communicating with you on a professional level right there could be a emotional need there could be a social need okay so uh, emotional need again is between people social need also is between people as well as between people and organizations there is a content which needs to be delivered which is uh, all this lecture that we are talking about you people are the target i am the source and the medium is what i just now explained to you right therefore our communication is number one purpose oriented then it's a more than one way process that means there are about 85 odd of you and me in one direction okay or rather uh, this is how the system is happening okay i am here 85 of you are there and we are exchanging psychosocial aspects thoughts feelings emotions but then that is only when you talk about feelings and emotions that becomes part of personal communication thoughts and data and information which is of business interest becomes business communication please remember that communication must follow the norms of or the you call it the communication protocol accuracy and appropriateness that is a brevity it should be brief and clarity it should be clear that means there should be no ambiguity in your communication there should be no second interpretation to what you are saying if you are saying i am a good person that means there is no further interpretation about it it means that i am a good person all right 
and this is also uh, valid for business communications okay so so far it was a refresher as an icebreaker and an icebreaker now what we're going to talk about is personality okay because uh, the introduction part uh, is related to personality <clears throat> the term personality arises from the latin word persona which is the mask which those you know the theater people they uh, put on their face to look like uh, you know somebody um, all these kuchi pudi dancers and everyone they put on a funny kind of a mask or in the uh, earlier uh, um, uh, days people used to go in the theaters with masks on their faces these days there's good amount of makeup uh, uh, which can change your appearance so personality emerges from that word. okay the purpose behind this mask is to project yourself okay and to disguise that means cover the identity so primarily when we are talking about personality we are talking about a mask that you're wearing to cover your actual um, self which is inside that mask okay and the personality pattern uh, there are certain characteristic patterns which define a personality uh, how you behave how you think how you feel okay all that and that is what eventually makes you unique therefore every person is unique every uh, individual is unique every organization is unique uh, because they have got different traits this different characteristics different behaviors different thoughts which uh, help them operate uh, within all right and the purpose of introduction emerges from here from your uniqueness okay this is what you are trying to uh, project when you are trying to introduce yourself somewhere let's see i am different i am rocket singh the best salesman of the year or whatever okay now so when we talk about self-introduction you need to first understand what is self right anyone if at any point in time you feel that uh, you are not understanding what i'm trying to share with you you are free to you know uh, uh, interrupt and ask okay so it's uh, the self is basically uh, you know a system of beliefs that one holds about oneself as i said in that example i said i am a good person that is a belief that i have okay and that is based on one is my own view and the other is from the responses of others okay my teachers my parents my principal my my, my, my colleagues they feel that i am a good person so that is my concept of self that i am a good person okay it's basically it's a reflection of the reactions of the way others view you as an individual right that is the concept of uh, the self as an individual all right now you will you you will um, understand in the next slide how individual becomes different from the organization or the importance of how self you know uh, gets absorbed into uh, a non uh, living entity okay the fact that uh, now the fact that uh, we will continue with the same example that i consider myself to be a good person so it influences the way i think this influences how i feel how i act so i will act in goodness i will not try to harm anyone i will not try to hurt anyone intentionally okay i feel good and i feel positive about everyone that i meet unless or till such time the person or whoever I have met has not been very good with me. I will think well about the person that I meet. So that is because it is my, my concept of myself as a good person is influencing my behavior. Okay. Now in the corporate world, this is this, this concept of self 
becomes a very very important factor because that is how the culture and values of organizations are influenced and that this and this influences the managerial thinking in an organization right so the personality of the organization emerges from the concept of what the organization thinks itself to be how it defines its mission and its vision and how the values are created within the organization what kind of a culture the organization is adopting and that became becomes the behavior it and of course there are you know uh, this uh, concept of self is a major influencer in behavioral attributes behavioral attributes for uh, uh, the purpose of this particular lecture would be uh, there, is, there there's a whole uh, series of lectures that one can conduct on this but <clears throat> i can share with you a few the, the behavioral attitudes could be you know uh, intelligence it could be self confidence it could be uh, your determination it could be initiative you know it could be your sense of okay so your concept of self uh, you know courage another aspect courage both moral as well as physical courage so all these attributes they contribute uh, or, or get influenced by your concept of self right yes now that's the, the the important aspect so far we have talked about self we have talked about personality so the need for introduction why is there a need for introduction why should anybody in this world feel that there is a need for introduction okay so uh, the need for introduction is from two uh, aspects one of the aspect is the business please remember that uh, that a business any business or any organization a business is a legal entity sorry legal person a business is a legal person it's a non live non living person but is a legal person in the sense that the business can be taken to court it can take someone else to court and it uh, has got something called a life of its own and it may come to an end or it may run in per perpetuity that depends basically uh, uh, it's talking about the uh, business as a person okay so when there is a person that person may need introduction uh, at some point one is the, the the reasons why businesses need to introduce themselves is when they uh, want to i have used the term creating a footprint okay when you want to mark your presence somewhere there is a there is a place where there is nothing there are maybe there are people around there are houses there are there's a village there's a how there are houses then there some more people come in the, the village becomes a, you know a little larger conglomeration and subsequently it urbanizes and then you know more number of people start living in and all of a sudden uh, star bazaar comes in so what is star bazaar doing over there it is creating a footprint it is making a mark for itself or making its presence felt in the arena okay so now to uh, so so the purpose for star bazaar to introduce itself to that particular uh, locality where they are you know uh, mm, they are, they are uh, fitting themselves into would be to tell those people see we have arrived we are there to deliver we are there to you know do something which is going to be of benefit to you so how do they do it uh, and another yeah of course the purpose would be to attract customers now there are say 1000 families living in that area so star bazaar sees the potential of a market over there and they set up shop okay the purpose is that they want to attract all the households so they would want those households to buy things from them 
so they would start stocking up things which are generally required in households it could be washing powder it could be uh, you know uh, lays chips it could be honey it could be milk it could be you know um, any anything clothing vegetables grocery because these are the things which those people need where you have now created a footprint so there is a need for them to introduce themselves then to run their business once they've started running their business or maybe uh, when they are starting they need money so so when they need money they will require investors to come in now how will investors come in some sort of an introduction will be required so star bazaar will have to tell potential investors the money uh, moneyed people or other businesses that see we want to set shop in this area and uh, we are so and so in their introduction they will be saying we are capable of this we are capable of this okay we can you know create uh, these facilities for the customers okay. another purpose another reason for businesses to be uh, there or to be uh, introducing themselves is for purpose of creating value the creating value is using competition there's already somebody okay there is a mega mart okay then there is so then there is a vishal store okay and these people are already serving that particular locality so the star bazaar also drops in and says see i am there i am going to give 5% less than what these people give okay what is done is is delivering the same stuff what these guys are doing but he has caused a competition okay so in the minds of the customers he has created value that means better prices and he has also created competition now as a result what will ha happen is that these people will compete against each other and the business has introduced itself in that section in that area as a consequence of this the business now offers alternatives to its customers i'm sorry the business has started offering alternatives which means that in conditions like what are prevailing these days in the covid uh, kind of a scene when you cannot all of you cannot go to mega mart because you'll have to stand in the queue over there maintaining social distance you have got an alternate source okay fine i'll forego my 5% i can go and stand in front of vishal okay so the alternatives are created by this means and how do businesses do this introducing themselves they use a lot of ways they use, they write letters letters to investors letters you know some sort of flyers they send to the um, potential customers and they put in media ads then solicited or unsolicited bids these are two businesses sending an introductory kind of a letter or an introductory kind of a proposal that we are so and so and in that there is a specified format which i had discussed in the previous uh, uh, session that uh, you know how you send solicited and unsolicited bids what is the purpose the purpose is that you tell the entity that this is your requirement and you primarily trying to tell the entity that this is your requirement and this is how i am going to meet your requirement so please hire me okay then they cause promotional events all those uh, uh, extravaganzas that they have that uh, you know the highest buyer will get a two wheeler as a gift on 31st december so all of you rush towards them all that then they send emails to potential customers so she use of social media and a lot of other creative methods which they have where they need to uh, introduce themselves to their stakeholders the next in the line is now since we talked about business business is made by individuals by people so now those people who are there in the in the environment how do they introduce themselves so as an individual you may have 
the need for introducing yourself for social purposes or for business purposes or professional purposes social purposes like for example i am one mr x who is you know who thinks that i can be a nice uh, you know, legislator okay so i will go to the village all the houses or to the locality and try to uh, you know uh, tell people all these are number of families that he is visiting that okay see i am um, here to help you out and uh, i will handle your issues if there are any issues with the government then i will um, get them addressed i'll get the drains made i'll get the roads made i'll get the wires fitted all over the place i'll get the cleaning done okay so he is doing it for a social purpose he is introducing himself with the intent of creating an impression in the mind of the people that see this is the guy who can help us and subsequently they are going to elect him also okay so that is, those are kind of social purpose introductions then there is another social purpose introduction you have you know you are building a house in a locality in a new layout and you do not know anyone over there okay so once your house is uh, ready and you want to move in you do house warming okay in that you invite uh, some of the neighborhood people some 10 15 odd people okay please join me for uh, my house warming come and have lunch with me so that you can know each other interact with each other so the next time when you cross each other you can say a hi and a bye those are social purpose introductions which do not require much of uh, details except that some bit of courtesy some bit of uh, you know decent behavior is good enough you know uh, between people for that introduction the other form of introduction is the professional introduction or the business introduction you could be a manager of a business or, or you are probably trying to seek a job somewhere for the first time all right so now i will focus uh, the rest of the uh, four five slides that i have towards uh, uh, people who are likely to uh, you know go into the first rung of uh, uh, of any organization that means at at the entry level all right so businesses as i said they introduce themselves a business manager would use the official channels uh, to introduce to a potential customer using a uh, maybe emails or the company letter had to introduce through a bid but a professional interview professional introduction is by way of introducing yourself the methods are one is a non contact and the other is a physical or contact uh, or sometimes in these days you have skype based um uh, you know introductions all those th they are called contact based okay so when you are in a non contact introduction what you do is you have to send in a resume please remember that your resume is an expression of you and an expression of you in front of an organization where you are expecting to sell yourself sell in the sense that you want an acceptance that you get absorbed over there so the best way would be to keep your resume simple do not make it as if amitabh bachchan is going for an interview right keep the facts on the table if you have something to share if you have done something uh, if you have not done anything whatever is there keep the facts on the table do not try to uh, you know um, do lipstick work over your resume that is what it means just so when you present yourself to an organization in 
the most normal and the most natural fashion you are seen in the same light but if you mask your uh, presence if you mask yourself then the people who are uh, you know witness to that uh, document of introduction they are experts they would be able to unmask or pierce the mask and will be able to get into your true personality and uh, you know you may not be able to achieve your objective so the purpose is this that is why i said avoid hedging for concealment when you use the term hedging hedging is a is is a term which is used in risk management as well but you know uh, uh, if you have noticed around houses around big uh, far, uh, you know places you have those tall hedges which are trying to conceal what is inside the perimeter so those hedges are basically concealing what is inside the walls or behind the walls so avoid doing that when you are uh, creating a resume uh, when you are creating a resume it is very important that you avoid any kind of aggressiveness in your language or any kind of timidity in your expression because a timid expression uh, would uh, you know it, it it would mean that you are going to bend over backwards to you know accept everything that the organization says too much of aggressiveness is something uh, which is termed in in in, in uh, psychological par parlance as rigidity okay nobody wants so there has to be a decent blend of the two you should appear to be flexible but not over bending okay therefore the language that you use is very very important please remember that in your in the use of the language if you extend courtesies if you are uh, you know polite and if it demonstrates your humbleness uh, please remember humbleness is different from timidity right this these are these are all positive attributes of language all right so use them whatever achievements if you have maybe your education or your achievements list them in a chronological order okay it could be the latest for on top and going down it okay this way or uh, starting from where you started okay if you are uh, so both with uh, your academic qualification as well as for your uh, achievements or any certifications that you may have had so the uh, highest certification or the latest certification may come in the beginning and as you go down that gives uh, an impression to the reader that there is a there is a kind of growth see when you there is a, it, it indicates growth okay but if you are haphazard if you are haphazard in listing your achievements it shows a a disorganized personality okay so please remember these are some very very uh, small subtle uh, things which uh, can be helpful and when you are sending your resume please remember that your resume is not the history of your family so ideally one page maximum two pages if you have uh, this because as a person who is going into the uh, you know entry at the entry level uh, you may not have too much of achievements accumulated behind you all right for those people of course who are uh, who have got several amount of years of experience they can possibly send in uh, a um, two page resume along with that an attachment and an appendix in which they give you details of oh, the various things that they have done okay but then for that you got to be uh, an experienced person with a lot of achievements this uh, i am uh, talking about someone who would go into an entry level so and of course a smart uh, well dressed photograph 
in whichever uh, form of clothing that you feel you are comfortable uh, scanned and uh, put along okay always write a cover letter always write a cover letter and, and in that cover letter write enclosed at the bottom okay and enclosed cv or resume whatever you may like to call it okay now please ensure that this there are certain things uh, for those people who uh, were there uh, in the last one i had talked about uh, business communication has got uh, four uh, aspects readability business writing readability is for the person whom you're sending for your target okay it should be written with the intention of creating an impression on the target not on yourself because you already have an impression of yourself and follow the accuracy appropriateness brevity and uh, clarity protocols in your non contact introductory introductory document right we move to the contact or media based introduction <clears throat> where this is when you are uh, either invited for an interview or uh, you are meeting someone uh, after a some, uh, after some sort of a equation has been established that all right please come over uh, let's talk okay when you are going for this kind of an introduction please do thorough research as much as possible of the target entity here i have said target entity specifically because it could be a business it could be an individual you could be meeting the boss of an organization or some okay so you could be talking you could be meeting in an individual capacity or as a person seeking uh, some kind of a relation with the business therefore it is always good to do a lot of research and search about of your target entity if you are so if you are going for an interview please make sure that you know everything that is possible about that organization if you are meeting an individual say for example if you are meeting this uh, uh, what is this uh, fellow tata okay uh, please read about him read everything about um, mr tata and then go and meet him because if you don't know that he, he loves having dogs and he, he has got a fleet of cars and but he's a simple person you will not have anything to talk about you will not be able to carry the discussion through all right and, and of course very important dress appropriately if you are going see you cannot be moving around uh, on a on a race track wearing a swimsuit okay so that is uh, the best example i can give you for appropriate dressing if you are going for a casual uh, meeting anything that makes you comfortable and comfortably fitting if you are for a formal occasion then formal dressing is essential there are plenty of formal uh, you know uh, dress wear uh, for both men and women it, it, there is no need to overdress or underdress okay uh, best avoid latest fashion clothes okay just use standard uh, formal wear that makes a lot of sense instead of wearing the latest trendy fashion wear that also uh, that also uh, includes a haircut uh, a decent haircut for the gentleman and uh, well done uh, hair for the ladies okay and you because see the object is that you should not be the source of distraction either for yourself or for the person you are meeting or having a chat with maintain eye contact when you when i say maintain eye contact it means look into the eyes of the individual or the person who is asking a question to you who is talking to you okay if you avoid if you start looking this side and or if you start looking this side or you start looking up or down it means that you 
are not confident okay so left or i left or right eye movement is not essential look straight look straight into the person but when you look straight it should be you know with a with, with a very pleasant uh, kind of a look you should not be looking at the person threateningly that i am here to you know finish you off that should not happen remain poised you must remain under control okay do not uh, lose your bearings because that will help you in being confident if your clothing is comfortable if you are poised you will always be comfortable sitting in front of irrespective of whether you're sitting in front of the chairman of uh, moody's or uh, in front of ratan tata or in front of me right please be aware of your body language please be aware of your body language because remember 93% of all communication that we do now since we are in a contact based introduction okay contact based means that there is some sort of a physical connect between you and the person you know, whom who whom you are introducing yourself to or into, uh, being interviewed 93% happens through your gestures through your actions through your body uh, the way your body is placed the way whether you are sitting straight uh, whether you are sitting comfortable all that is uh, non verbal communication and that amounts to 93% so basically what you are talking or what you have written is only 7% of it all right so this makes a lot of difference whenever you are posed a question take some time a slight pause is always helpful there is no need to rush to an answer thinking that yes i know everything no please take some time off take a brief pause compose your thoughts okay primarily this is for composing your thoughts okay how you will uh, put your uh, thoughts into words and then those uh, words into uh, sentences and then okay and it is always helpful it is always helpful if you have got time to rehearse with somebody a friend or a mentor or an elder at home maybe a, a brother or a sister or a husband or a wife somebody who can give you a very uh, you know unbiased opinion about what is to be done or whether you are sounding uh, too uh, formal or uh, you sounding too casual or too officious okay you should sound your natural which means that you should sound positive you should sound proactive that is very very important in any kind of a uh, contact based interview uh, introduction right there are while we uh, come to the end of our uh, session there are some important uh, revisional uh, aspects that i would want to share with you and uh, this is that you must when you are sending the communication whether it is a non contact information or uh, by way of uh, a contact uh, introduction please remember that there is somebody whom you are talking to so focus on this he or she is the target or the organization is the target of your communication you should be able to create an impression in the mind and the heart of that particular target remember the a b and c of communication it is always it is best even in personal communications it is best to keep this in mind because it helps you obviate and avoid a lot of hassles at a later point in time when writing please use active voice do not overcompensate either by timidity or aggressiveness as i mentioned earlier please remember that you are selling yourself you are seeking acceptance in that organization so try to be the best sales person that means share the best qualities that you have show yourself put your best foot forward present yourself in the best way that you can okay don't overdress that may look gaudy don't underdress that may look horrible okay there is no excuse and for being not formal or for leaving your courtesies be polite be factual when you are writing letters when you are writing your 
resume or even otherwise when talking avoid the use of abbreviations or slang of any kind you know this dude and other things those are not the kind of words that are to be used in any communication whatsoever <clears throat> particularly for non contact introduction please proofread your document which you are sending and don't send it immediately after writing take a little think off take time to think reread it better to read it thrice over and over because there is a lot of grammar that comes into picture when you are writing so you got to understand that uh, your punctuations are in place your grammar is appropriate and there is no scope for any kind of uh, ambiguity right also remember in case of international uh, mails or international messages even domestic avoid using the terms good morning or you know good evening in your mails because you may you may have sent in the morning okay you have sent in the morning even even domestically not just a different time zone even domestically you may have sent a letter to me early morning so you have written good morning sir now i read it once i am free after my day's work later in the night at 10 o'clock and it is good night time for me the moment i see good morning it you know changes my entire it disorients me okay so these kind of terminologies are uh, better avoided instead of that it is good to use salutations use the right salutations okay okay like for example uh, if you are writing to dear professor dear sir dear madam dear whatever okay uh, or greetings of the day the best would be greetings of the day so it could that that fits in everywhere all right well that brings me to the end of uh, this uh, session and if there is any question that anybody may want to ask me you are free to do so Right. Any students do I'm have done. any questions please go ahead any any questions I, any clarification I, students uh, i hope i have to put 87 people to sleep <laughs> no sir they are there then some uh, 10 students are there on youtube also uh, students please go ahead right. uh, ask for any clarifications any doubts because you uh, will have to face a lot of people during uh, uh, industry preparedness program and also during interviews so you better ask any confusion or any doubts you have go ahead and ask so if there is if if, if these students at any point in time if they feel that there is uh, any uh, sort of uh, you know clarification that they would want uh, particularly uh, from the grooming aspect uh, you know when it comes to attending interviews and all they are more than free to uh, you know uh, uh, associate with me on my either on my mail or they can talk to me on my um, phone number which is uh, 9243443241 and my uh, email is regalshark at gmail.com right so yes, uh, please feel absolutely free i'll be uh, more than glad to uh, help you i have been into the system of uh, selecting people uh, officers for the armed forces for uh, over 16 years and therefore uh, you know i'll be certainly able to help you out all right uh, is, is is there some way you can share this presentation with you, sir? yes sir I'll, uh, I can share. We have a group. Uh, I can share it on that. Great. So this is being recorded, right? Yes, it is being recorded. Fine. Uh, then if uh, I have your permission, I'll take your leave. There are no questions. 
Yeah, I guess there are no questions. One last time, I'll just check, sir. Any students uh, have any questions to ask? Okay, I think that's it. I guess. I think uh, uh, maybe they're having. Uh, they have to visit the campus, sir. From Tuesday, they have classes. Maybe they are preoccupied with that. Right. Anyway, we'll uh, uh, we'll ask them to uh, get in touch with you, sir, if they have any doubts. Tick, uh, tick, tick, okay, tick, so tick. thank you uh, very much, uh, Commander, sir. Uh, excellent session. Uh, I think uh, students had an uh, uh, informative session, and uh, Mohammed Faisal says a very informative session. So thank you so much, sir, and uh, we look forward to meet you. The pleasure is entirely yeah. mine. Thank you very much, everyone, for being so attentive or kind to me, listening to me. I wish you all the best. Please stay safe and a happy Diwali to you all. Yeah, thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Oh, this is Dharmendra. Dharmendra, how are you? Yeah, yeah, doing great, sir. How about you, sir? Good. How's Hema Malini? <laughs> That's a good one, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, sir, we have uh, just now we finished our introduction, introducing self session. Uh, we have around uh, Eight, 67 students, sir. Right. Uh, students, uh, we have... Uh, uh, sir, are you ready with the presentation? Uh, can we start immediately or you want to... I'm okay. For a few I'm minutes good. But I think you, uh, the students have just finished the session. You can give them yeah. a five-minute break, then we can start. Done, sir. Uh, maybe 2.10. Okay, 2 past... I mean, 10, um, ten minutes past 2 o'clock. Uh, shall we start, sir? Absolutely fine. Yeah, okay. Okay, students, uh, please be back for the next session on presentation skills by uh, uh, Professor uh, Sudeep Majumdar at 2 10 pm. Thank you so much.
हेलो हाय सर आई एम हियर सर अदर मिनट्स हैव टू टेन इट्स टू नाइन बिकॉज़ सम स्टूडेंट्स हैव लेफ्ट हैव आस्क्ड टू टू कम बैक हम्म नो प्रॉब्लम कैन यू सी मी यस सर आई कैन सी यू गुड गुड कैन आई सी सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स या स्टूडेंट्स यू कैन स्विच ऑन योर कैमरा सर वांट्स टू हैव अ लुक एट यू Don't worry. Whatever state you are in, you see your face. That's all. Students, switch off. Switch on your camera, please. Shy bunch of students. If we are so. so shy to show ourselves <laughs> what will we do in an interview students you can uh, switch on your camera hi ritu and ritu i can't hear you you're on mute hi sir good afternoon good afternoon how are you i'm good sir how about you absolutely fine Yes. And a happy Diwali to you in advance. Wish you the same, sir. Where are you? Which location are you? I am in uh, Sindhanoor, sir. That comes in Raichur district. Raichur district. Okay. So you are at home. Yes, sir. Good, 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 good. Can I see some other people? It's always good to see young people like you because I have a daughter who's twenty-one years old, and I miss her big time because she is abroad. Okay. Nice how, how are they doing, sir? She's fine. She's in Italy, uh, pretty badly affected by COVID, but uh, she's safe. Okay. Can I see some of the people, please? Hi, sir. Hi. Sir, this is Saif, sir. I attended last workshop. Saif, you. you're back. How are you, sir? Yes, sir. I'm good, sir. You, sir? Absolutely fine. Say if I want to see your face, man. Come on. Ah, uh, sir, just a minute, sir. I will. How How is your mother safe? She is good, sir. She is good. She is going to work. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Good to see you. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you too. How many people in this room have uh, in this group have attended my previous session? I think this is the first time, sir. I think, uh, yeah, you are taking the first uh, session for this MBA Bangalore University College. This is the first oh, time, sir. No, sir. We have already attended. Oh, workshop. You must have attended, sir's workshop. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That means not all students have attended. Only the registered students have attended the workshop. Registered students. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Can I see some of the people? How many people are there? Sixty-two. Amjad, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum Assalam, sir. Hi, sir. Hi. How are you? Hi, sir. I'm nice, sir. How are you, sir? Good. Good. Where are you, Amjad? I'm in Bangalore, sir. Bangalore itself. Great. Which yes. part of Bangalore? J P Nagar. J P Nagar. Very close to my place. Okay. Where do you stay, sir? Kanakpura Road. Kanakpura Road. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, so good afternoon, yeah. everybody. Uh, sir, uh, with your uh, kind permission, I'd like to give a brief introduction about yourself. Uh, sure. Go ahead. Our students. Yeah. Good afternoon, students. Uh, we have a professor sudeep majumdar among us now uh, he has vast experience as a management consultant and i'm sure he would have given thousands of uh, uh, tens of thousands of presentations till now so i think that makes him the best person to uh, tell you about the skills which are required to give a effective presentation uh, sir has been independent management consultant 
and has a history of working in the management consulting industry and he has a strong program and project management uh, uh, skills in crm sales management technical recruiting training and delivery and sourcing and uh, uh, professor sudeep majumdar uh, right now is uh, also working as adjunct professor at banan sagar university sir uh, uh, we are privileged to have you and our students are really lucky to have you uh, today uh, to give uh, tips on uh, presentation skills so welcome you sir and uh, uh, i'll hand over the mic to you for your session thank you uh, yadav sir thank you so much and it's a pleasure always to you know interact with uh, this millennial generation of people because i believe this generation actually will teach our generation a lot of things and uh, so for us to learn a lot of things i would uh, you know request this group to be as interactive as possible to you know so that we learn from each other and that's the best part so let's start by uh, you asking me a few questions please feel free any question is good go ahead feel free let's make it interactive with see you i think you've learned by now that communication is a two way process right do you agree yes or a yes yes sir so if communication is a two way process let's make it a two way process because we got to spend 3 hours together yeah and 3 hours i'm not a person to give gyan for 3 hours i'm a person who loves to interact with people especially younger people like you so that i learn something so let's start talking go ahead ask me anything any question and no question is a silly, silly question like we say and we always say if you ask the right question you always get the right answer feel free anybody otherwise what i'm going to do is my father was from the armed forces and safe will vouch for that if you you don't volunteer i'll make you volunteer okay go ahead let's start with uh, ritu since you're there any question no sir we we just do presentations in college but i don't know what is the right way so i would like to hear from you sir okay so let me ask you for the what are the type of presentations that you do in college no that's okay background noises are always welcome we have uh, done presentations on subject topics like uh, organizational behavior uh huh okay and uh, okay. yeah few other sir ob right on ob yes okay yes. all right great 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 and see we have 3 hours and i will definitely share my experiences in what goes into an effective presentation but before that to set the level playing field i would like to understand from all of you i am me and i don't change for anyone yes who's that okay that's a nice uh, dp you have there uh so idea is let's break some ice first before i really you know deep dive into what goes into making an effective presentation so let's talk some more so you can ask me any question that you want to know about me and so that's where we start with right go ahead anybody okay saif why don't you start yes, by sir. why don't you start by introducing yourself uh yes sir uh hi my name is saif ali and i'm a third uh, and i'm from marketing uh, third semester mba bangalore university uh sir i like very much in giving presentations sir and i have little bit skills of presentations a uh, giving presentation uh, as in my under graduation i was not very effective in giving presentations 
but uh, in mba i improved little bit sir and um, one of my teacher in uh, first semester her name is tejasuni ma'am and uh, like uh, six uh, top presenters uh, in that class she picked uh, uh, among one of my, uh, one for me also sir wow in that's that good, yes sir. congratulations that's nice uh, okay. yes sir. but but the thing is uh, when i give presentation sir that uh, i feel little bit nervousness and uh, i don't forget that points uh, very uh, very soon but the thing is that uh, what i say means like uh, i have little bit of scare sir when i face to the audience okay that's natural let me we'll talk more about that as we go f- uh, further so can apart from self anybody else who can introduce yourself just feel free don't feel nervous yeah we are all friends here come on let's make it interactive because the more you interact the more let's have some fun yeah that's how it is going to be let's have some fun okay you want to hear a story the story is like this uh so there was this village and in that village there was a monk you know monks you know monks right yes sir yes, yes sir yeah? so there was this monk who was very very senior who was very learned and who was very wise and because he was so wise people from all over the you know nearby villages used to come to him seeking his advice and trying to find a solution to all the problems they had in life so this monk was very famous in that village there also lived another monk who was very young and intelligent like all of you you know like all of you young intelligent waiting to go ahead and conquer the world and this monk was there but this young monk was very unhappy because even though he was so 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 intelligent nobody used to come to him for advice so one day he walked up to the senior monk and he told the senior monk sir i want to be as famous and wise as you why don't you share your knowledge with me so the senior monk said of course i would like love to share my knowledge with you but for that you have to accompany me on a journey i am going on a religious journey so you will have to come with me and on the way i will share my learnings with you so the young monk agreed and so the two monks set off on a journey and they started walking and walking and walking and as they were walking the senior monk started sharing his wisdom with the junior monk and what happened as the knowledge transfer was happening this young monk was becoming very enlightened and he was feeling very good and during the course of the journey they came across a river and on the river bank they saw a lady standing there a beautiful lady as if she has been delivered from the heavens dressed in all her beautiful dress and jewelry standing on the banks of the river now as the monks approached this lady they saw that she was crying there were tears running down her eyes and both the monks were perplexed the senior monk goes up to the lady and he asks why are you crying young lady the moment he started conversing with this young lady the young monk got very angry he said all this time he has been telling me not to be looking at people of the other gender not to be speaking to them and he's already started conversing with this beautiful lady but he couldn't do anything the senior monk said ask the lady why are you crying young lady young lady said i'm crying sir because i have to cross the river because on the other side of the river 
is the village where my daughter, uh, where my sister is getting married. And I can't cross the river. That's why I'm crying, because she is getting married any time. So the senior monk said, it's very simple. Just why don't you know? The river is half deep. Why you can just, you know, wade across the river and go to the other side. She said, sir, because the river is half deep, if I try to wade across the river and go to the other side, my dress will get spoiled and I got, can't go to my sister's marriage like that. So this young uh, old monk said, why don't you then take a boat? She said, sir, that is the problem. That's why I'm crying. Because there are no boats today because the river is half empty. So the senior monk said, then what do you do? Then this lady said, sir, anyway, you both you monks are going to cross the river. As you're crossing the river, why don't you pick me up in your arms and drop me to the other side? That way it will be good. So the senior monk agreed and he picked up this young beautiful lady in his arms and started crossing the river by this time the young monk was very 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 angry he said what the hell this person is saying not to you know speak to the other gender not to look at the other gender and now he is picking up this beautiful young lady in his arms and he's crossing the river anyway the crossing happened the lady was dropped to the other side she looked at both the monks and said thank you so much may god bless you and she went on her way. The moment she left, the young monk asked the elder monk, Sir, what was that? You don't practice what you preach. You are a hypocrite. The senior monk said, wait for five minutes and started walking. And after five minutes, immediately, this young monk accosted the senior monk and said, Sir, you better tell me what happened. If you don't, I'll tell the entire world. You're a liar. You're a hypocrite. You don't practice what you preach. And then they started walking. After 10 minutes, this young monk couldn't stand it anymore. He stood in front of the senior monk and said, Sir, can you tell me what you did? Because I'm getting very angry. Because if I, you don't answer me, I will get physical with you. The senior monk just smiled and said, I carried that young lady in my arms across the river and left her on the banks of the river and then continued. And for 10 minutes, you have been carrying that young lady in your mind for the last 10 minutes and see what it has done to you. It's made, it made you frustrated. It's made you angry. It's made you getting violent. You know, my friends, there are certain things which we carry in our minds which we should have left in the banks of the river many years back because that is the cause of all our frustration, anger, violence, everything that happens is because of that. The elder monk had left the lady on the banks of the river whereas the younger monk was carrying that lady in, her, in his mind for so much of time and you see what it does to people. Any learnings from the story? Anybody? Do you like the story? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice story, no? What is the learning from the story? We need to uh, leave the evil thoughts and all uh, there itself. Absolutely, Swati. Just leave it there. You know, now because you're stepping into life, especially the corporate life, and you will understand the concept of dropping things from your mind which are not relevant to you. Because it clutters your mind. It's very important to free your mind. Because if you free your mind, there is space for more knowledge to come in. Okay, so on this note, please uh, uh, let me tell you, let you on a very simple thing of introducing yourself. 
So uh, what is the first question that you are going to be asked in an interview? Introduce yourself. Tell me something about yourself. Yes, what will you say? <laughs> what will you say? Pallavi Das, what will you say? Okay, imagine that you're, you know, in an interview now, and uh, I am taking your in interview, and I'm saying, tell me something about yourself. Any of you, one of you, this is a practice session, no? There's no Gyan session, let's have fun. Come on. Or one of you can ask me the same question. I'll give you an answer. Sir, tell me about yourself. Okay. So my name is Sudhi Bazundar and uh, I can tell you a lot of things about myself. I can tell you uh, about my education qualifications. I can tell you about my achievements. I can tell you about my strengths. I can tell you about my passion. Which one would you like to know first? Uh, sir, uh, your passion. My passion? Passion. Yes. Yeah. My passion is a, called, a game called cricket. And uh, five, uh, four years back, I had the opportunity to be the motivational coach for the India under-19 cricket team along with Rahul Dravid. What would you like to know next? Sir, your education qualification. I am a BCom Honours MBA graduate. Did not you take the opportunity? Did you what, what was the question, Ritu? Was it Ritu? Was it? Yes, sir. did not you take the opportunity of training uh, young cricketers? Oh, I did, no. I was. I spent one week with the, you know, Rishabh Pants and uh, Sundar Washingtons and Khalil Ahmeds. All of them, I'm so proud of the fact that today they play for India. That's right? good. Sir. Yeah. And I'm very proud of the fact. And once in a while they call me up and say, Sir, how are you? I'm feeling down. Can you help me? What would you like to know more? Sir, what are your... What are, uh, so skills? what's your significant achievement? My significant achievement is becoming a father of two beautiful daughters. So what is your skills, sir? My skills? Uh, yes. Sales, marketing, uh, learning and development, uh, setting up a start startup, uh, uh, traveling all over the world, doing all this. My last year, I was in a you know, program for United Nations in Afghanistan. And I had face-to-face uh, -face conversations with the Taliban there. And I came back alive. What would you like to know more? Sir, tell us anything uh, about your weaknesses or uh, where do you think that you want to develop something on? Actually, you know, by work, uh, from a concept called circle of influence. It's a concept by a person called Stephen Covey. And he says, uh, people who operate out of circle of influence hardly have any weaknesses. So I operate from there. My weakness, however, is I tend to overwork a lot, which sometimes makes me feel tired. So that's, I think, one of the biggest weaknesses I have. I stretch myself a bit too, too far. Sir, since ahead. you mentioned cricket, yeah. Since you mentioned cricket as your passion, yeah. Uh, who is your favorite cricketer, and what's the one thing that you like to take from him? What's the Raul one Raul quality Raul that you Raul 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 Raul. And what do you take from him? Humility, to be humble in life. Thank you. Sir. Go ahead. I am giving you an opportunity to take my interview. A few days after, it will be your interview whom somebody will be taking. 
Okay, so let me ask you a question. So, how, when somebody asked me, tell me something about yourself, what was my answer? You, uh, you said your name. Right. And, and uh, you told said, that you can tell many things about you. Right. That what you want to know first from me. Right. So what happened there? Who took, charge took of, who took charge of the conversation? You, sir. Interviewer. My friends, is this a learning for all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody asks you, don't be, you know, overzealous and start vomiting everything about yourself, you know. Wah! And that's what a recruiter knows. Ha ha ha. This is going, guys. The moment you start doing it differently, then he is on the back foot. Are you getting it? Yes, yes sir. sir. So this is one learning that you have to start with. Now, let me also tell you something. When somebody says, what can you bring to my organization? What do you say? What can you bring to my organization? Now, these are real time questions that you're going to face, sir. Swati was saying something. Yeah, Swati. Uh, to improve my skills and uh, as well as to work for the achievement of the uh, objectives of the organization, goals, objectives of the organization. No, but why should I give you an opportunity to improve your skills, Swati? Because I thought you already had skills for which we might recruit you. Uh. So are we getting somewhere here now? Okay, so ask me the same question. Yes, sir. Uh, then why we need to recruit you sir, for, for our organization? Thank you so much, ma'am, for the question. Well, uh, let me tell you, I have 32 years of work experience in the corporate world. 32 years of experience in sales, marketing, business development, operations, running our own startup, and learning and development. So, if you see this entire, you know, spectrum of experience that I have, if I bring this to your organization, I can share it with employees in your organization and hence improve the productivity and profitability of your organization. Secondly, I carry 14 international certifications in learning and development, 14 international certifications in various fields. If I bring it to your organization, sir, can you think? of the amount of value add the employees of, of your organization will get right thirdly i have a whole repository of training content with me which i have created and curated over a period of time if i bring that huge repository of knowledge into your organization can you imagine the immense value i can add to the employees of the organization. So thank you so much, sir, for giving me the opportunity. And I think that makes me the best candidate for this job. Uh, sir, hmm? uh, sir. As you has your very experience, sir. But no, that uh, here experience. we are. That doesn't mean. Yes, sir. That, no, sir. Out. That's your experience. But yeah, for experience. the students. So now for the students, you know what I just shared with you is a structure and let me share. We just need to prove them that uh, we are suitable for that position. Yeah, but how? One second. One second. Just hold on, please. One second. Yeah, I'm doing Google Meets for the first time. So I'm having a little bit of problem of sharing the screen.
Just one second. Sir, in right corner, you'll find present now option, yeah, sir. Now. I'm presenting that. I'm just trying. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Thank you. You know who helped me? Ritu, sir. Yeah, while Ritu was helping me, my nine-year-old daughter came and helped me. You guys are pretty <laughs> smart nowadays. Right? Okay. This is the structure. When I told you, you said 32 years of experience. No, this structure applies to every single person in, a, in the world during an interview. What is the first fact I told you? I have 32 years of experience. Because of this, what is the benefit you will get? See, remember, any organization wants to hire you for the benefit that their organization will get, not your benefit. So I said first fact was 32 years of experience. Second fact was 14 international certifications. Third fact was huge repository of content. Now these, because of these, because of all this, this is the benefit that your organization will get. Remember, organizations always look for their benefits. Now, let me ask you. Let me ask uh, Ritu here. Ritu, tell me one unique achievement of yours. Or say for that matter, one achievement of yours. Saif, you just said no. Out of the six best presenters, I was one of them. That yes, is, sir. That sir, is I don't view. know if it's unique, but uh, I am the runner-up of marketing event in uh, Super. commerce. Super. So that becomes your first fact. I have been a runner-up in the marketing ev event for? Commerce Fest. For commerce. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that is... The benefit to you, sir, if I'm a runner up there, that means I'm a winner, right? And if I'm a winner, you would want winners in your organization, right? Tell me one more. Anybody else? Anybody else? So like that, you know what you have yes, to do? Huh? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Sir, good 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 <laughs> Beg your pardon? Hello? Yeah? Yes, sir. Myself, Samgar Visa. I feel very proud to say that uh, I wrote a competitive exam in 5th standard, which is uh -huh. a district level exam. Uh, it, conduct, uh, it, it will be conducted every year in the whole nation. And right. uh, it is a nowadays entrance test. In that, I got selected in top 80 students uh, in that particular year. Uh, it, was, uh, it was like uh, in the year 2008, I think. Okay. Then I uh, got selected one among the top 80 students and I was fortunate enough to join Jawahar Navodaya Vidyalaya. Then right. uh, in, in my 10th standard, I got interest in sports such as badminton and uh, athletics. Then I was, uh, I, like, I practiced hard and uh, I got a chance to go up to regional level in badminton. So. Super. Which was conducted in Bangalore. Now see what is happening, Shambhavi, all these things that you said are your facts. Right? Or your so. achievements in life, whatever it may be, like that every single student in this room has achievements. What you have to say is why, why because of these achievements, why the organization should hire you. Are you getting it? Now that's so important in creating that impact, you know, creating that impact on the eyes of the recruiter because he will he or she will start seeing you as a differentiator who can benefit his or her organization. So why should somebody hire you is because I have a whole list of achievements which I have done in the past. And because, so let me ask you, all of you shared your achievements. Aren't you proud of those achievements? Yes or a yes? Yes, so. Absolutely. So what we request you to do 
is take some time off in your free time when you are not busy with your friends when you have me time when you are alone write down think sit down in a room go out in the terrace sit down and write all the achievements that you have done in life and i'm sure that there are going to be many once you have those achievements please use them in your interview because that is what is going to make the difference between you and them will you do that yes, yes sir and i have given you a structure structure opening my name is sudeep mazumdar first fact 32 years second fact 14 14 international certification third fact content and hence how did i close what did i say because of all this i think i am the right candidate for your organization you have to be assertive here once you start demonstrating all that and in business communication you learned you know a bit of verbal communication body language and all all that you put together and then you will see what happens hey you guys are coming back to college is it yes sir When? yes sir on 17 from the 17 seventeen that's tuesday yes sir okay maybe given an opportunity i'll come and meet you guys will that be will be happy so yeah great that would be great sir. good 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 okay see you now uh, let me also set some i know i just dived into the session let me also set some uh, you know cautions here because we are in a virtual environment and there is a lot of power cuts that are happening if the power cut happens you might lose me for a couple of seconds i do have a backup but the it takes time for about 2 minutes to 3 minutes for the power to come back so please bear with me don't run away don't think your professor has run, run away right uh the other thing is since we are here for about uh two more hours it's 2:45 now and uh uh let's say we take a break at 3 for about 5 minutes and then uh take a break at 4 for about 5 minutes and then continue how does it sound good sir okay sir sound good okay great 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 so now uh let me ask you you have been presenting but have you been in an audience when somebody else was pre uh, presenting i mean have you been in presentations as yes sir yeah sir our most, classmates most of your classmates right they present what do you think of most of the presentations sir it was very good sir when How i present have uh, you been have you met no just because your your classmates you are saying it's very good have you been in any other presentations apart from your classmates with somebody uh, no sir no anybody no sir you know you heard about this uh magazine called the wall street journal wsj yes sir yeah wall street journal it talks about all the uh, stocks and uh, market trends in terms of financial that is happening now many years back they conducted a survey of about 200 odd senior vps and vps of multinationals and they asked them sirs you have sat through so many you know so many uh, presentations what do you think of them could you give us some thought but well, let me ask you a question you guys watch movies yes sir sir uh, yes sir uh, who's your fav favorite actor or actress uh, sir uh, talapati vijay vijay ah yeah? okay yes sir then ladies okay so likewise in the movies what do you think they are doing they are acting or presenting acting both sir 
they are actually presenting their acting. Yes, have you thought about that? They have the skills of acting, right? But out there, they are presenting the skills of acting. This is very profound. Huh? Think about it. Rajnikanth or Kamal Hassan, who is a better actor? Both are good in their ways, sir. Who sells Controversial more? Answer. Controversial, no? Who sells more? Who makes more money? Rajnikanth. Rajnikanth. Why? He appeals to mass audience. And Kamal appeals to class audience, is it? Yes. Yeah, because Rajnikanth actually presents his acting in a unique way which appeals to the masses. Now, when Wall Street Journal conducted the survey and they asked, come on, tell me what you felt about the presentations that you saw, you know what they said? They said 3% is only stimulating. 44% of presentations were boring and 40% presentations were sleepy. Interesting, no? And this is in the corporate world. Very interesting. So let me ask my friends here, in which percentage you want to be? Which percentage you want to be? Interesting presentations. Which is in this slide? Three percent. Three percent. So today, we are going to give you a few little tips on how to be in that 3%. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. That's nice. Now, can you, can you see me on camera still? Yes, sir. You can, right? Now, the impact of the message You know, we always said that, right? That 93% of any message is what? Non-verbal. And only 7% is verbal. This is from a UCLA professor, 10th year study of non-verbal communication. And I think Commander Joshi also talked about it, right? So ideally, when you're presenting yourself, when you're going for an interview, you're actually presenting yourself. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, that's why you have to wear your best, you know, uh, clothes, formals, uh, neatly uh, have a good haircut, uh, neatly tied hair, wear formals and go for an interview. That means you're visually presenting to, to that person, right? Visually. And then that seven person that you speak is, you know, how I, uh, you know, help you understand how to introduce yourself. All that will fall in that seven person. So what are we trying to say that who's, what is the message in a presentation? What is the message in the presentation? You are the message, period, nothing else. So, gentlemen, what will you wear to your interview? Come on. What will you wear? Formals. 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 So, gentlemen, in formals, what does it include? And ladies, I'll come to you later. Formal shirt, formal pant. Put in a and tie. Put in a jacket also, put in a tie also. Yes, sir. It's very good. All of you are handsome young people, yeah? And let me ask you a question. When you are going to a wedding or, you know, a party, how are you dressed? How are you dressed? Casual. No, you're going to a, you know, you know, marriage and you're dressed well, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What happens? What, ladies, what, gentlemen, what happens when you're dressed well? What happens to your confidence? Is it... Down there or is it up there? It will boost, sir. Yeah. Ah, you dress well, you feel good. You look, 
look at yourself in the mirror and say, Umma, I'm looking so good, Ma. Yes or no? That means your confidence is up there. It's high. So we say, if you dress well, your confidence is high. Ladies, what will you wear to an interview? What will you wear? Hello? You'll wear your normal salwar suit or you can wear a western, you know, formal, you can like this lady is wearing. That will make you look very, very professional. And hence, at the same time, your confidence will be very, very high. Are you with me on this? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Great, great, great. I want to see that confidence. Maybe when I meet you guys, I want to see that confidence. Okay. Now, any presentation that you make has this the three aspects of a presentation. One is, of course, the structure of the presentation. Second, of course, is the content, what goes the body of the presentation. And third is the delivery, which will create an impact in the presentation. Most important is the delivery format. You might have a lot of super content, but if you don't do deliver the content well, it will not have impact. However, keep in mind, all three of these are very, very important to create an impact in the presentation. Oh, sir, can you repeat one more time those three things? Which is... You can see it now on the screen? Yes, sir. Sorry, I was seeing to you, sir. Oh, okay. Sorry, you can see the screen. Sir, sir but it's not there, sir, on the screen. You can't see it? No, sir. None of you can see it? Uh, it's not that uh, we are able to see your screen, but then uh, we are able to see your website uh, uh, page. So I think uh, PPT slide is not at screen. Just one sec. Give me a, give me a moment. Give me a moment. Can you see it now? I'm no, sir. So we'll have to stop sharing and reshare it. Okay. Stop sharing and reshare it. Reshare the PPT uh, slide, sir. Yeah, yeah. That window. Actually, I'm used to. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you so much. So what we say, the three things that go into presentation impact. One is structure, how you structured your presentation. Second is the content or the meat of the presentation. And third, most importantly, the most, most important part is how you deliver the presentation. And there are some ways of delivering the presentation, which I will share with you shortly. OK. Image factors impacting influence. Image factors means what is visual to an audience which impacts them? Professional competence, how we relate to people. I don't know whether you noticed. In fact, what am I doing with you? I'm presenting, right? How we relate to people. In fact, if you look back at the small little interaction that we had, I started interacting with you people, right? I started talking to you by names. That is one very, very good way to make an impact with in a presentation. Second is our attitude and self-control. Now, our attitude. You know, there's a beautiful saying, your attitude determines your altitude in life. So if your attitude is positive, your altitude or your height in life will be positive also. Self-control, tell me something. The other day I was watching an interview of Amitabh Bachchan with some small kids. And those small kids asked him, Uncle, don't you feel nervous before, you know? Have you ever felt nervous before going in front of camera? Amitabh Bachchan said, 
why before even today i feel very very nervous before taking going in front of the camera but i know the day i don't feel nervous i will never be an actor anymore i'll never be able to present myself to the audience anymore so it is good to have the butterflies and shaking legs before you make a presentation because that will keep you on your toes while you're making the presentation provided you're on top of your content and then how we communicate now this is going to be a big challenge my friends because i see in this forum nobody is hardly one or two or three of you or four of you are communicating if you can't communicate in an environment like this where you're not threatened with physical presence what will you do in an interview and the last part is our appearance there is a saying in hindi and i will translate that in english later which says jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai have you heard this before yes sir yes sir yeah yes, and that sir. applies to you also my friends so these things are very 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 important in a presentation and we will discuss more as we go ahead in the meantime you can take a 5 minute break as promised at 3 o'clock it's 31 you can come back at 36 all right okay yes sir yes sir all right see you on the other side of the break
Hi, welcome back. Are we here? Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. OK. So let's talk about the fundamentals of presentation. First is own your material. Now, as you you'll come into the corporate world, what you'll see is, because people are busy with deadlines and all that, and so somebody is supposed to make a presentation, and he's got ca called into another meeting, he will take the presentation, give it to his colleague, and say, hey, uh, this is a presentation that you have to make. Can you make it for me? Make the presentation for me. What do you think will be the effect of the presentation? Now, somebody else has made the content and I'm going to present it. What do you think is going to be the effect? Not effective. If not effective, absolutely. Because I don't own the material. So every time you make a presentation, make your own material, own the material, and feel positive about the subject. And project the value of your message to your audience. That is so important. Would you agree? Because in a presentation, people have come because of one factor. You know what that factor is called? Anybody? That Sir, I don't know whether it's correct or wrong. I think what interest for them. Hey, there is nothing uh, correct or wrong, but just let's talk. Tell me, what is it? Sir, the information should be interesting. Benefit. Yeah. You know, the factor that brings it, that anybody who's sitting in a presentation is called WIFM. W-I-I-F-M. You know what that is? Anybody? No, sir. It's called What's in It for Me. मैं तो बैठ गया हूँ यहाँ पे, but इससे मेरे को क्या फायदा? What's in it for me? That is very important. Every person sitting in an audience, in his mind, is saying, "I am listening to this person, but what's in it for me? What do I get out of it?" The WIFM factor is the most important factor in a presentation. If you have nailed the WIFM factor, you have arrived as the king or queen of presenters. Because everybody wants a value, no? By the way, broadly, there are four types of people in an audience. You know who they are? Anybody? Four types of people in an audience. Active listeners and passive right. listeners. Active, passive, yes, you're right. So, you know, we've... Uh, Find some terms for them. One we say is a learner, a person who's come to learn something. One is somebody who's called a vacationer, who's come because he has got nothing else to do in life. Let's go and spend some time. The third one is called the hostage. He has been forced to go to the presentation. And the fourth one 
is called the terrorist. His only agenda is to hijack your presentation. These are broadly the four types of people. Can somebody repeat them for me? Four types of people. One is the learner who comes to learn something in a presentation. You'll find these four types in any presentation in the world anywhere. He has come to learn something. I'm going to spend two hours, three hours. Like uh, in this room, I think, how many people are there? Uh, Professor Yadav, how many people are there? 58, sir. 58, OK. So 58 people are there. Out of them, a few of them have only come, people who are interacting have only come to learn something. Right? Most people are on vacation. All right, we have to log in. Let's log in. Third type of people have been forced to come here. The professor said, you have to come, come. And fourth type of people I haven't seen who's anyway trying to hijack my presentation. It's not there in the audience, right? So please, before you walk into a presentation, keep these four people in mind. They'll be sitting in some four corners of the room. Clear? Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Some guidelines. You're all not God, right? You can't remember everything. So we say make brief notes. So let me give you a personal face up experience which I had with a person called Mr. Azim Premji. I worked for him for about eight and a half years. Mr. Premji had to make a lot of presentations. Do you know? Behind each presentation that he had to go and make, there's a whole bunch of people sitting on the back end making these brief notes. And they had small cardboard you know, sheets in which they used to make these brief notes, give it to Mr. Premji. Mr. Premji used to put it in his pocket. And as he was presenting, he used to take out one of those notes, refer to them, and then carry on. Nobody minds if you make brief notes and refer to them during the presentation. Don't write out your entire presentation. Just make brief notes. Never memorize. It is your content. You're on top of it. So why should you mem memorize? Use evidence. Can somebody tell me what use evidence means? Somebody, anybody. Use evidence. Facts about the <laughs> Yes, facts. Somebody said data, right? Or evidence can be in any form. It can be a testimonial. It can be a video. Today, people use videos, right? You know, somebody uh, very interesting. Yesterday, somebody reached out to me uh, through, through an organization called Transformation Leadership Cause. Uh, they're trying to do some transformation in the leadership space in the corporate world. So they said, uh, Sir, can you just make two minute videos of yourself on two topics? And can you mail it to me by tomorrow or WhatsApp it to me? I would like to circulate it among the top leadership of the country. So just imagine technology people are using. Use evidence. Always in any content, whatever is there in the presentation, know much more than what you can. Why is that? You might have it on your slides, whatever is relevant, but no more than you can use. What is it? Anybody? Why? Sir, like points that we need to elaborate for them, explaining right. for so those suddenly, points. Yes, absolutely. Suddenly, Saif, one question might yeah. come, which is not there in the PPT, right? Yes, sir. But you being the yes, sir. subject matter expert, Audience will ask the question, sir, after they present. Of course, they will ask. Yes. Because, sir. And so, if you don't know more than you can use, then you'll be in trouble, right? Yes, sir, absolutely. And the last and most important fact is rears. Practice. What are the three key words in the real estate business? Can somebody tell me? Three key words in the real estate business. Uh, 
Anybody here whose family is in real estate? Or you know somebody whose family is in real estate or friends who are in real estate? The three key words in the real estate business is location, location, location. What are the three key words in the presentation business? They are preparation, preparation, preparation. Remember this, the more you rehearse, the more you prepare, the more successful you will become as a presenter. Nobody is born a, born a presenter, right? Nobody, yes, sir. nobody is born a presenter. Nobody is born creative. Remember that. So over practice, you know, very important. And this is something which Raul Ravid told me. You know, Sudeep, the concept of will, skill, and drill. I said, no, yeah. Tell me what it is. He said, you know, when a child aspires to become a cricketer. He is willing himself to become a cricketer, right? He has the will. When he comes to a coaching camp, we teach him how to, you know, hit a stroke. We teach him how to go on the front foot, how to duck and all that. So what are we doing? We are giving him skills. But his will and skill is good enough to become a successful cricketer. There is a third aspect of it. It is called drill. I said drill means? He said, drill means practice, Sudeep. If you don't practice, all the will and skill that you have will never, never be successful. Interesting, no? Yes, sir. So you have the will to do an MBA. When you come to, a, to the two-year MBA, you get a lot of skills from all the distinguished professors that are there. But if you don't go and practice the concept that you've learned in MBA, what will happen? Why do you think that you know concept of internship comes in? Because it gives you an opportunity to drill, to practice. Today, even if it's a charity match, if you see, the first person out in the nets is a person called Sachin Tendulkar. Have you noticed that? Do you think he's got to achieve anymore? But no, he believes that I keep, have to keep on practicing if I have to be on top of my game, even though I'm retired. Interesting, right? Yes, so, sir. Any questions? I'm willing to take any questions. Guidelines for presentation. Use visual aids. Jo dikta hai, wo bikta hai. We talked about controlling butterflies. Take deep breaths. Listen to pep, pep talks. Keep success cards with you. Do some physical activity. Now, this is very crazy. Uh, all of you, today, the new concept in India is stand, stand up comedians, right? Like Dani Sait and all those. How many yes, of sir. you have, have yes, been? Sir. Yeah, have you ever been to a, you know, any stand up comedy show or seen on youtube there are so many of them sir i have yes. seen so many yes sir so many right yes sir. No, i have this junior of mine from school he's a stand up comedian before that he was a commander in the indian navy his name is manish tyagi his handle is naughty commander so he's a junior of mine from school. So one day he lands up in Bangalore, he calls me and he says, Dada, I'm doing a show, why don't you come? I said, okay, I'll come. And he said, Thoda pehle aja na. we'll sit and talk. So I went a bit before the show, I went backstage and I found find this guy standing in front of a mirror, a mirror and slapping himself. I said, what the hell are you doing? He said, nee, this is how I control my butterflies. So that's a physical activity. Some people do push-ups and all. Okay, now most important is this is a very important saying in this world. In this world, there are many, many, many copies. Don't be one, be yourself. Don't imitate others, be yourself. Copies, so you will find left, right, and center. 
and by the herd mentality that we as indians we copy everything however rarely we see people who are being yourself you have to be a differentiator if you want to be a good presenter now if somebody you know calls me to do a presentation so whenever as an adjunct professor i am called to do a you know talk with you people i consider myself honored to be speak i said this is a great honor yeah people are asking me to speak i give sincere appreciation the other day i was uh, you know addressing a group of educators and the first thing that i said was thank you so much i am so humbled to be standing in front of such an elite panel who contribute to the future of india thank you so much and i genuinely meant that people who are in the education business are actually creating or crafting the future leaders of the country would you agree yes sir yeah, yes absolutely. sir and mention the names of some of your listeners didn't i do that yes sir right you did sir absolutely and what does it do you have an Im immediate co connect with the rest of the audience they say yeah okay i would like him to also take my name then play yourself down not up don't stand there and say rishte mein to hum tumhare baap lagte hai you know be normal play yourself down most importantly say we not you we not you not i you you know just don't stand there okay uh, students today i am here to teach you presentation skills did i ever say that and if you notice most of the time i use we yes sir we gets the entire audience on your side the moment you say i it becomes me and them so the more of we that we use the more connection with the audience is there this is a very simple and fundamental premise of presentation skills fundamental premise keep this in mind and keep on practicing this on a regular basis tell me something honestly very 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 honestly when you con converse with your you know uh, friends in college what language do you use i mean honestly a local language sir. local language so slowly we'll have to start because local language will not work in the corporate world and english is a very funny language and it is not our mother tongue but it is the most is the only language of the business world the universal language of the business world even if i you know when i when my wife writes a mail to her chinese colleagues in china you know in china she doesn't write in chinese she writes in english when she talks to them she talks in english because that's the common language and that's the language you will have to get used in the corporate world so start practicing it now say we not you don't talk with a scowling face or a braiding voice you know make a scowling so what should you if you are saying don't talk with a scowling face or a braiding voice what should you do what should you do now there's a definition of a curved line which makes the world straight anybody knows this a curved line which makes the world straight yes sir what is it is that smile absolutely right it's called a smile <laughs> smile as much as you can while doing a presentation that was ritu right 
Yes, sir. Bang on. Good show, girl. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, sir. Talk in terms of your listeners' interest, not in your interest. Because remember, W I I F M. So you have to talk in their interest, not your interest. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself in a presentation. I love it whenever I get a chance to present. And you can see it from my voice and my body language. Isn't it obvious that I'm having a good time? Yes, sir. Yeah, have a good time. Everybody makes mistakes. Don't apologize. Just carry on with your presentation. Every audience has no noble emotions, right? So appeal to the no nobler emotions of your audience. Welcome criticism. It's okay. People will criticize. Be a good person, skilled in speaking. You know, welcome criticism is something which is very difficult for us to take, which is also called feedback. I hate when somebody gives me feedback. But if you, as you go ahead in life, you will understand that feedback makes you a better person in life. Always. Do you ask for feedback? You have to ask for feedback. I know on a, on a regular basis, I ask for feedback from my spouse. I ask for feedback from my mentor. I ask for feedback from my friends. Quite often, they tell me, how do you think I'm doing? And somebody will say, Sudeep, you're not doing very well. I think you should focus here. I said, why do you think I'm not doing well? Then that person will give point one, two, three, four. I said, okay, let me work on that. Asking for feedback is very difficult as a human being. Taking that feedback and acting on that feedback is more difficult for that human being. But if somebody can master this, then that person becomes successful much faster. Now in preparation, who is my audience? I have to do audience analysis. So let me ask you, if you are supposed to make a presentation to what's F, your favorite company? Uh, sir, in FMCG HUL, sir. HUL. I have to make a presentation from the Aran Sagar to HUL. So who is going to be my audience? What is the purpose of the presentation? Uh, sir, about the uh, FMCG product, sir. About the FMCG, and you are making it to? Uh, to the customers. To the customers. So I have to know who is my customer. Yes, what sir. What is the profile? Yeah, if yeah. you remember, we did that last time. Sir, homework, sir. Homework, homework, homework. Yes, sir. Homework is not only related to, you know, the uh, our education life. Homework becomes more important as I move into the corporate world. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And then what is the purpose of my presentation? Why am I presenting? To sell my FMCG products, right? Yes, sir. Now, most important is how will I open, open the presentation? What are the major points I will make? Supporting ideas and evidence that I will use and how will I close? Now, this is so, so critical in a presentation. That yes. Sir, where you introduced about spin model, sir, in right. that last workshop. Uh, so, how is it? can we... Uh, you can sir, spin here 100%. Yes, sir, spin model. Yeah, but we'll not discuss it here because most people haven't gone through that workshop. Yes, sir. Do you think they missed out on something? Uh, sir, do you think the people who didn't go for the presentation uh, for the workshop missed out on something? Yes, sir, a lot. Okay, so maybe you can use your good offices to share whatever you learned with them. Yes, sir, absolutely. Right. So that will that will become your presentation to them. Yes, sir. Right. Will you do it? Yes. Yes, sir. Great. So nice. Thank you so much. So now, who is my audience? What is the purpose of my presentation? How will I open? Major points that I'll make. Supporting yes, ideas. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. 
supporting ideas and evidence that I'll use, and how will I close? So you know, there is a structure in this preparation also. There is an opening and there is a closing. Yes, sir. So go ahead. Let's see. Why do I present? There are only four purposes that I present. One is to convince or impress. If I'm selling a product, I'm trying to convince. If I'm selling a service, I'm trying to impress. Or I'm just there to give information. Or I'm there to persuade or inspire people to take action. Or I'm communicating to entertain. Four purposes of communication. To convince or impress, to inform, to persuade or inspire to action, and to entertain. Do you think there is anything else apart from this? No, right? No, sir. So this we've already seen. How do I open? Or if somebody says, why should you, why should I hire you for my company? First fact, benefit, evidence. Second fact, benefit, evidence. Third fact, benefit and then closing. Okay, I think I want one of you to just follow the structure in introducing themselves. Just one of you, go ahead, feel free. And there's no right or wrong or whatever, it's just a learning process. And in learning process, we make mistakes, it's okay. We learn, it's okay. Just go ahead, one of you. Ritu, would you like to go ahead? Or where can I see the participants list? Tanushri, Bharti, Spurti, Stalin, Sylvester, Sunil, anybody? Nobody? Okay. All right.
हेलो हेलो सर आई एम सॉरी लाइक आई मेंशन नो द पावर आउटेज हैपेंस इट टेक्स सम टाइम फॉर मी टू कम बैक यू कैन नाउ सी मी यस सर यस सर यस सर कैन यू सी द स्क्रीन नो सर ओके सो लेट मी जस्ट शेयर दिस अगेन Just one sec. Can you see the screen? No. Can you see the screen now? Hello? No, sir. No. No, sir. We can't see. Yes, one sec. Yes, one sec. Yeah, can you see it now? Hello, sir. The PPT is not available, sir. PPT is not available. No, sir. Just two minutes, yeah. Just two minutes. Let me just see. In the meantime, uh, uh, so can quick somebody quickly recap uh, what we have learned till now? Can you see the screen now? No, sir. now sir uh, no sir no sir still the ppt is not available sir so sir in the meantime can you uh just quickly recap till now what we have seen a uh, sure sir go ahead it will be practice for you also uh sir uh, like uh, how to be how to give the presentation like what are the three impacts uh, like structure content delivery impact right. of the presentation and after that uh, guidelines and fundamentals 
of the presentation right um like uh, we should see who is our audience like we have to concentrate on the audience four types of audience as you said sir who are the four uh four are like uh, mm, what is this sir a forged one and the second one is like a vacation a learner a learner a fourth are hijackers a hijacker terrorist yes sir presentation no i think you can see your screen you can see my screen ritu save can you see my screen sir we can see sir but the ppt is not available sir we can It's see your screen you are presenting to everyone okay so tell me I don't know. I'm not getting that option to show my PPT. How do I do that, sir? About a minute ago, it was visible. Yeah. Then again, uh, the screen was blank. Now? No, sir. Sir, open your PPT and minimize it. Then do present. I open my PPT. I'll minimize it. Yes. Uh, then do present screen. Okay, present screen. Ah, uh, then uh, open the minimized uh, app, sir. I mean, open minimized presentation. Got it. No sir. Should I leave and rejoin? I think that that be better. Because the power went off. Something happened there. Uh, no sir, it doesn't work like that. Maybe we'll have to open the slide first, then uh, come back to the Google Meet uh, web page, click on Present Now. Then you will have option as in which window to present. Then you can click on the uh, slide window. Then uh, it will be available sir no so what is happening is uh one second when i go to present now i have your entire screen a window i click on the window right entire screen sir maybe you can try that so after clicking entire screen you can just uh, navigate to uh, the powerpoint sir now it's available sir you are on mute sir okay we are back yes yes sir now it's available yeah, i'm just sorry about that those power outages is a bit too much and my backup is taking time okay now we, let's look at openings what are the type of openings that you can do in a presentation what is what does a good opening do 
and somebody tell me very simple it gets favorable attention lead naturally into the presentation it builds goodwill and create points of agreement now in today's session can you tell me i did an opening with you what was that opening i used a very different type of opening but that is the flavor of the season today in any presentation that works beautifully it gets the attention of the audience interaction sir no opening just think think anybody anybody and people who are who were active right at the beginning can make out which got your attention a humor a humor humor yes you told That's everybody okay. to switch on their videos that is okay switch on the videos which nobody does it was understood but very important i told you sir you told a story story thank you so much did that get your attention yes sir yes sir was it a good story yes sir yes sir so that was an opening which i used i used a story as an opening you know one very famous 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 person used to use opening stories as opening he is no more with us the founder of apple who is he steve jobs steve jobs absolutely if you go and you know do a google and look at some of his you know launches even while launching an iphone he used a story and that's so strong where is an iphone where is a story but that connects back to it so i use a story however that story get get any good opening gets favorable attention leads naturally into the presentation builds goodwill and create points of agreement other ways is use an exhibit you know in the startup ecosystem and having me in a part of the startup ecosystem lot of these startups they go to this vc meets you know venture capital meets and there they use their exhibit or give a demo of their startup sir can you please take to the previous slide sir yeah this one yeah uh, yes sir thank you okay sir okay yes sir can i move on can we move on yes sir yes sir sure sir opening techniques so i use a story some people use an exhibit especially today in startup ecosystem they use a lot of demos uh dramatize your ideas you get participation and cite points of agreement on common ground okay that means we are on the same page level playing field while we do that or some people use something called an analogy some people anybody knows what an analogy is anybody explaining a particular thing and then asking something to uh, related to it yes ritu right yes sir absolutely something which is very different and then which is like an example to the related field so sure. let me ask all of you um, all of you go on like to go on drives or have been on drives on the highway yes or a yes yes sir of course you have which is your favorite highway which is the best highway that you've been on mumbai Please. pune express highway mumbai pune express highway beautiful beautiful now that's a six lane right so you will have traffic coming uh, from mumbai going to pune on one side and on the other side there is traffic coming from pune to mumbai right and there's a divider in between right yes sir exactly now as you come into mumbai uh, pune city 
the road becomes narrower and narrower. At one point of time, it's just a single road and there is no divider in between. Traffic is coming from all sides, right? Going to all sides, right? Any highway, when it enters a city, ultimately ends in a single road. You would have noticed that. Now, in that single road, because there are small, a uh, lot of vehicles coming here, some vehicles, two wheelers coming here, three wheelers here, rickshaws are also there. Sometimes little small, small accidents also happen. Yes. However, on the main highway, small, small accidents don't happen. But if a big accident happens, what happens to the entire highway? It gets totally jammed, right? One big accident happens and the entire traffic is held up on both sides. You know, in the telecom field, there are two types of technology that was being used in India at one point of time. One was GSM, the other was CDMA. Now, GSM actually operates on the concept of time division multiple access while CDMA means code division multiple access. Now, in GSM or TDMA, there is one pipe through which signals are sent. So signals which are being sent use one channel of the pipe and signals which are being received use one channel of the pipe, the other channel of the pipe. In CDMA, there is no demarcation of channel all signals coming and going are all over the place. So in CDMA, if you have used it many times back, you'll see there are a lot of call drops. But in CDMA, in uh, GSM, if something big happens, then there is network congestion. Now, the Mumbai Pune Expressway is nothing but GSM or TDMA, whereas a single road in Pune is nothing called CDMA. Now you got the analogy. What did I use? I used the example of a highway and a single road to explain the difference between GSM and C CDMA. That is what is called an analogy. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. One of the yes, most sir. strongest tool of a presenter is the analogy how effectively the person uses an analogy now i could explain to you because i was in the telecom space for some some time so i could you know i understood understand the technology hence i could relate to you you can also do the same once you are subject matter experts of your own subject another way to start is a startling statement do you know that 83 percent of divorces in India or in India are as a result of one factor. Can somebody tell me what that factor is? It's called lack of communication. 83%. That's a startling statement. Good news is tomorrow is Diwali. And that's good news, right? So you can start off with an analogy, you can start off with a startling statement, or you can start off with good news. Now, there is another way some effective presenters who are masters of the subject do, do that. They ask questions. So how many people in this room or in this group have heard of cloud computing? Anybody? Uh, how many people in this room know about the four P's of marketing? Yes, sir. What are they? Yes, sir. Product, price. What are they? What are they? Product, uh -huh. price, price, promotion, right. and place. Place. Right. Thank you so much. Now, I asked this question to the group. I got, I know that people know to gain information. 
to gain participation and create agreement on a need or interest. How many pe people in this room know about Porter's five forces model theory? We all know. Sir. You all know? Yes. Yeah? Yes, sir. You know, right? Okay. How many of you have read? How many of you have read about creating value at the bottom of the pyramid? Anybody? No? No, sir. Okay, great. No, the, sir. Concept, the concept was by a person called C.K. Prahlad, who started saying that uh, any, uh, you know, any consumer society to grow, you have to create value at the bottom of the pyramid. And based on that, Unilever went out and started creating value at the bottom of a pyramid for people who couldn't buy shampoo. What did they do? How much does a bottle of shampoo cost? 150 to 200, sir. How much does a sachet cost? 1 rupee, 2 rupee, 3 rupees. Sachet, even, you know, uh, the person on the, uh, you know, street can use it? Yes, sir. Buy a, uh, you know, invest his money 150? Yes, sir. I'm so that is the concept of creating value at the bottom of the pyramid. Yes, sir. And you, that's Unilever's success story. Or Calvin Klein, if I'm not sure. But yes, they followed it up. Okay, now, so what I'm doing, I'm gaining information, I'm gaining participation, and I'm creating an agreement in a need or, on a need or interest. Another way of opening is the incident. Personal experience, third party, historical. So you can share your personal experiences, third party or historical. Uh, you know, about a year back, I got an opportunity to go to Afghanistan from the United Nations and look at creating infrastructure for the schools in Afghanistan, which were totally destroyed due to the war. And as I was spending time there, I also found, found out why schools were not being, even though there was a lot of money which is coming from the United Nations and uh, other agencies, the schools were not functioning. And then I did, uh, did a deep dive and it was very risky. And I found out why the schools were not functioning was because the money that was used to build the schools were being siphoned off by various agencies. Now that got me thinking, if a nation does not want to invest in education, will that nation ever grow? Right? So hence, integrity is a very important thing for nations to have, for them to move forward and develop. This is a real personal experience. And now I opened with the incident and I will start off. Today, my presentation is on honesty and integrity of nations. And then that becomes the body of my presentation and I keep on going. Or it can be a third party experience, you can say, or historical, something which happened in the past. You can open with that. A lot of people said history has it. History has it that when the bubonic plague happened many years back, people thought it will never come back again. But history was proved wrong because COVID-19 proved history wrong. Right? So let's talk about COVID-19. Are you getting it? Different types of? Yes, sir. Different types of opening you can do. Or you can use something like the compliment. I'm very, like I said, I'm very happy to be standing in front of, uh, you know, a group of individuals who shape the future of India. Thank you so much. So that 
it can be the compliment can be to the listeners can be to the organization can be to an individual also so these are the different types of openings that can have now look at this beautiful thing what are the types of openings that you can have it's called defeats if you can remember this nothing like it defeats sir huh? evidence defeats doubt it can be demonstrations it can be examples it can be facts it can be exhibits analogies it can be testimonials so and so person has written this about me or it can be a lot of statistics it can be you know how many people have died due to covid anybody has this has this figure of late anyway so these are the ways of opening evidence defeats doubt if you can remember demonstrations examples facts exhibits analogies testimonials statistics so this is how you open how do you close anybody how do you close tell me and you can also do this in a by asking the doubts sir no by clearing their doubts by clearing the doubts you can also do this in a presentation keep a bottle of water handy next to you because your throat will become very very dry like it's happening to mine so this is again a demonstration okay all right closing yeah clear the doubts some techniques so go back to the opening now there is a beautiful rule in presentation it's called the t3 rule anybody heard this rule before t3 no sir okay so let me tell you t3 is tell them what you are going to tell them second t is tell them third t is tell them what you have told them so tell them what you are going to tell them is your opening and setting the agenda tell them is the content that you are going to that you are presenting and tell them what you have told them is closing t3 rule to structure a presentation follow the t3 rule always so you can tie back to the opening speak on a personal level dramatize your ideas use an impactful visual be brief now you see a drummer right the person who plays his drum at the end of the song he does and he takes it like that right that's called build to a crescendo so your words you should be like a drummer finish it off on a high okay any questions till now Yes, okay. Okay. To convince or to impress, repeat a major benefit. Use a quotation. You can use quotations. So the four parts of what do we we saw now in a presentation there are only four parts. One is to convince or impress. Repeat major benefit. Use a quotation. If it is to inform, repeat your key points. Repeat the steps of a process or plan. if it is to persuade you have to get them action and benefit and get a final recommendation and to inspire throw down a challenge appeal to the nobler motives i am challenging you dear students that after this presentation skills program if you practice some of the tips that are shared with you i am challenging you that you will always be a successful presenter anybody wants to take the channel yes sir great very good that's it a big hand for you throw down a challenge appeal to the nobler motives this we saw is how do i present complex information clearly 
I explained to you what should you use here? Analogy, right? That was complex, yes, right? Sir. PDMA, PDMA, and all. But I use the analogy yes. of the highway to make it simple. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So presenting complex information clearly, I open, I explain, I send the message, and I close. Okay. All right, four five. Take a five minute break. But before the break, this is a definition of an an uh, example of an analogy. As takeoffs and landings are critical to a NASA space flight, so are openings and closings to a competent presenter. So takeoff and opening, landing and closing. Getting it? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. I leave the slide on quickly. Five minute break, and then we are back. Okay, shall we move on? Yes, sir. Okay, now looking at use using visuals. Now it's very important in in a presentation there should be more visuals than text. Keep that in mind. Text should be minimal. What are the benefits of visuals? You can dramatize ideas. You can guide the presentation direction and make the message easy to understand. Because a picture is worth a thousand words, and that saying stands so so true in today's world. How do people learn? Eighty-three percent people learn more through eyes. 
they are called visual people visual learners 10% of people retain through only 10% is through reading and then hearing 20% people retain through hearing however the best combination seeing and listening is 55% and this comes from the united states armed forces study seeing and listening is 55% 55% of people so hence what should a presentation have more visuals sir more visuals absolutely and listening anyway the presenter is talking now what should go into a visual number of visuals required how much permanent effect it should have on the audience it depends also on the size of the audience the content of the visual time to prepare and of course cost i mean this doesn't come it doesn't hold good anyway because today anything is available on the net would you agree yes sir okay now there is something called question and answer now good presenters or comfortable presenters who have been doing it for a long time don't do this but i suggest for people who are you know presenting step, stepping out into the presentation journey for the first time like most of you you should at the beginning of your presentation put a disclaimer saying that i'm going to present today on so and so topic and i'm sure during the presentation you might have a few questions however to keep the presentation seamless we request you to write down on a piece of paper a few questions that you have that might come up in your mind because at the end of the presentation we will have a question and answer period this i suggest and i always tell people who are stepping in the presentation business for the first time set this context set the ground rule because otherwise what will happen in the presentation can somebody tell me your presentation will get hijacked because there's going to be a few terrorists in the room right or hijackers so the chances yes, of your presentation getting hijacked is very high if you don't set this disclaimer at the beginning of your presentation what is the benefit of doing this it clarifies message it reinforces the key points that you've been talking in the presentation it exposes resistance provides opportunity to show more evidence to give more you know any of the evidence that you want to give whether in terms of statistics whether in terms of demonstrations whether in terms of anything and it encourages audience interaction so these are the benefits of q and a if there are benefits there are going to be risks also right what are the risks i might know not know the answers to all questions yes or a yes right however i am on top of the subject i might not have an answer to a few difficult questions so what do you do here anybody what do you do if you don't know the answer what do you do you can be honest enough and say thank you so much for the question sir i don't have the answer to it just now however i commit to you that once i find the answer i will come back to you if you can leave me your coordinates that'll be very good people appreciate honesty and if you try to answer something that you don't know you will have egg on your face you will fall flat sir can you say one more time sir that line okay thank you so much for your question sir as of now i don't have an answer to it but i commit to you that i i'll go back and search for the answer and once i search for the answer i will send it to you if you can share your coordinates with me your coordinates can be mail 
or you know phone phone number i'll definitely get back to you and answer the same question and answer period risks one audience member may dominate discussion especially the terrorist he will do it time constraints may be hard to enforce all presentations have a fixed time like we have today from 2 to 5 oh, sir while anyone dominates means at that time what we have to do sir for this person you know what i do generally yes sir and it always works i don't try to take on that person head on i i look at him in the eye and i say that that's a very you know that's a very interesting question anybody else in the group would like to answer to this so this is called a reflection technique so moment you say anybody else in the group would like to answer to mr x invariably one or two or three people will answer excellent sir you don't have to do anything this technique of mine i learned a long time back is called the reflection technique you don't take him head on because if you take him head on it will become a one to one while the others will feel distracted they'll say what the hell is happening you know so just say that anybody in the group would like to answer to mr x immediately somebody will answer it has never happened in my life that nobody has answered invariably of the four types of people the learner is the first person who will answer as a psychology you know he's come to learn something and he's learned something he want to show off what he's learned so he will answer him okay yes sir some audiences are non responsive some audiences are hostile you might also come across this it happened to me you know initially in my in one of my training programs i was hostile means literally hostile they were but at the end of it they liked me so much that they went and took their car and dropped me to the airport that also happens so i was doing a training program for a company called z tv for their cable operators in mumbai do you have any idea who the cable operators in mumbai were at that point of time they were guys with white shoes white shirt gold chain you know what type of people they are right and they were hostile they were the kya sikhayega ali pilich time kharab karta hai and all that they were saying but slowly slowly i got them on the side at the end of it they were so happy that they dropped me to the airport so this is clear question and answer you have to have yes sir now how do i set up a question and answer guideline after you finish your presentations you say now we have time for question and answers raise your hand and say who has the first question if you don't do that then some 100 questions will come and you will not know whom to answer so you set the precedence by raising your hand and say who has the first question and if there are no questions you manufacture your own question so if there are no questions i what i do is generally in the past when i've been running this session people ask me what is the best form of presentation and then i answer my own question by saying the best form of presentation is where you have 55% audio visual thrown in and then move on and say who has the next question right this is how you set up the q and a session we have time for question and answers who has the first question if no questions manufacture your own question answer your own question who has the next question continue like this listen now how do you close a q and a session you repeat or para paraphrase you respond when you say who has a final question and reiterate the closing point finish it off get the hell out of there a uh, sir yeah uh in some q and a session there will be people asking so many questions uh, so the time will take so much so at that time what we have to Look do at the time uh we have exactly 20 minutes for q and a guidelines you said the time first when you are doing that when you are doing this 20 minutes as you are coming to about 
80, 17 minutes, you say, okay, so we, during the Q&A, we have looked at so-and-so, so-and-so. Now, I have time for one last question. Who has the final question? That's it. Finish it off. Okay, sir. No, but you have to set the time timeline here. Very important. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Just one sec. Motivating others to action. Now you have an audience. You want the audience to act on something that you want to say. What do you do? Anybody? We have to encourage them, sir, first. How? Uh, like what they actually want to say, like what's their thing in the mind. Okay. So do you think there is a structure of this? There can be a structure for this? Yes, sir. It would be. Okay. So now let me tell you, You know, uh, about uh, three, four years back, I was driving from Bangalore to Mysore. And uh, that's an okay highway where you can do about 100, right? 100 kilometers per hour. I was driving around and suddenly from behind, I hear, you know, huge noise of a Harley Davidson coming. You can hear them from, you know, kilometers away. And by the time I could blink my eyes, this guy had just taken off, you know, just went past me, zoom, he went. I said, wow, if I'm doing 100, that guy should at least be doing 140, 150. And I continued. And near Mandia, when I came, I saw a huge crowd gathered on the road, looking down at something. And this Harley Davidson guy was had a pillion rider with him. And as I moved close, and since the car could not move, I got out of the car to see what happened. And I saw the same Harley da uh, Davidson bi bike had crashed. And there was a pool of blood. And I could make out in that pool of blood, the person that's sitting at the back was dead. You know why he died? Because even though the rider was wearing a helmet, this person was not wearing a helmet. Hence, all of you are young people, and I know you love to drive, but go ahead and drive. But please make sure whenever you're driving, at least the rider and the pillion both wear helmets. Otherwise, lives and safety would be at stake. So my friends, please be careful. Wear a helmet while driving. Will you do that? I'm sure all of you will, even if you don't. How did I motivate my, my audience, young MBA students to action? Is I use a structure. I gave an opening, I was driving, I gave the evidence that there was an accident, the pillion driver died. I closed by saying, I, my request to you, my action item for you is to wear a helmet, both rider and pillion while driving. The benefit is the safety of yourself and others. Beautiful structure, no? Yes, sir. Keep this in mind. It's a very strong tool in presentation. Open, give the evidence, close, urging for action and the benefit to the listener. Very, very nice structure in one of the tools that you can have in your presentation. Now, it also says the percentage of time while you're giving this presentation, the percentage of time you can use in this structure. If you see my example, I spent 90% on the evidence, right? 90% of the time I explained to you how I was going on the bike, I was going in the car, how the bike came from between. 
90% of the time is spent in the example. Action, spend 5% of the time. Benefit that you should have, spend 5% of the time. But majority of the time, please spend in the example. You know, in presentation terms, what this is called? It is called the magic formula. And you can use it as many times in your presentation for different, different ideas that you're giving. You can keep on using the magic formula. But how do I, how do I plan? So everything is about preparation, right? In a presentation. So while planning, I will write down the action that I want first my audience to take. So in my mind, I had first thought that I want my audience to be wearing helmets while riding. That's it. What is the benefit? Obviously, safety of ride. And then I will think of an example which ties in with this. This is while I plan. Right. But when I deliver, it is the other way around. I start with the example action and benefit because action I'm spending 90 percent and you guys could visualize while I was talking right what is happening on that highway so you yes, have sir. to make huh? yes sir you have to make your audience visualize what is happening give a nice solid example then action and then benefit in the delivery any questions on this no, sir. Okay. Now, sometime you might get into pre precious situations. Like a lot of people are asking a lot of questions. Saif, like you said just now. Yes, sir. You can use that technique, definitely. But you have to maintain professional composure under pressure. Just be professional. Don't show your nervousness. Communicates clear, concise, positive messages, sell strategic ideas, self and organization. That is when you come to an organization. Communicate competence and confidence and communicate leadership ability to handle stressful situations. So what is the pressure, uh, you know, process? There should be a process for everything, right? So there's a process for doing this also. Most importantly, listen. God has given us two ears and one mouth. Why? To listen more and talk less. Then paraphrase. Any idea what paraphrase means? Anybody? Paraphrase means if somebody asks you a question. So why don't any of you ask me a question? Go ahead, feel free. Ritu, if you are there, you can ask me a question. What is paraphrase, sir? Okay, so Ritu, what you want to understand is what is paraphrasing? Yes, sir. So what did I do just now? I asked me a question the, back. I repeated the question in a different manner, the same question that you asked. So that okay. is called paraphrasing. So one more example. Yes, Say, why don't you ask me a question? Any question? Uh, sir, what is a uh, question, sir? What is question? So Saif is trying to understand what is cushioning. Are you getting an idea of paraphrasing? OK, cushioning is when you paraphrase, automatically you have time to think for yourself. That is called cushioning. I am cushioning for time. Now you ask me a question, a tricky question. By paraphrasing, I have taken some time in my mind to think. That is what is cushioning, cushioning for time. And after I have questioned, I will respond to him or her. And then bridge means move over to the next question. Clear about the process? Yes, sir. OK. A good job of a presenter is to inspire people to embrace change. You want people to, you know, embrace what you're talking about, right? 
how do you do that first we have to understand what are their problems sir no i mean only because you understood the, their problems you are making the presentation no sir otherwise why are you see what are the four four things that goes in a presentation what are the four things if you remember what did we talk about what are the four things that a presentation does come on anybody four things a presentation does i am going back to the slide i'll just tell you four things a presentation does either to convince or impress to inform to persuade or to inspire now to inspire now say for example maybe we can inspire by explaining them the advantages of uh, undertaking change okay so what first let's understand change what is change what is change anybody out of comfort zone out of comfort zone definitely what is the recent change that happened in our life covid 19 pandemic absolutely COVID online learning it just came and hit us like this no dram yes sir yes sir even i was not open to the change you know i was stuck in delhi in a hotel for 71 days with only the caretaker of the hotel because that got locked down i couldn't get out there were no flights even though i tried but there were no flights there's no trains no buses 31 days can you imagine now that was a change that hit out of the blue nobody expected it quite a few people didn't expect it but i had to embrace that change so i embraced that change i started doing meditation i started doing uh yoga you couldn't even go out for walks or something like that everything was closed i started walking on the terrace i started writing i started writing and i discovered that i could write and i'm on the process of writing a book now things like that and i read a lot i read a lot i my vocabulary increased i i put a target of learning two new words per day the end of it i was the winner okay now inspiring people to embrace change now let me tell you a story here um so your campus is on hosu road right right all of your family is on hosu road no sir no sir no more some but your main some Oh, you're in Kumar family, right? But you're yes. familiar with Fosu Road, all of you. We have heard, heard sir. Road, right? Yeah, you traveled on Fosu Road at one point of time or the other. Now on Fosu Road, uh, you know, in the morning, and it's a very crazy road, right? Traffic is very bad, heavy traffic also. Some trucks and all also go on Fosu Road, especially as you're, you know, going towards Fosu. so one morning a father and his son were driving on hosu road in their car when suddenly from the opposite side one you know truck came and crashed into the car it was a very bad accident it was so bad that the father died on the spot and you no know, people nearby they came running and they saw the child was not dead but he was critically injured so they quickly picked up the child and rushed him to narayan rodula on hosur road there in the emergency room the doctors had a look at the child and they said they have to perform a critical operation to save the life of the child so they called the chief surgeon to perform the operation 
the chief surgeon came to the operating room looked at the child and said i will not operate because he is my son how is that possible the father is dead the chief surgeon came and said i will not operate because he is my son and it's a true story i'm not lying how did that happen think 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 you can ask me if you're not here you can ask me questions then who is a person who died the chief the who is the person who died the father and even that uh, senior surgeon is also his uh senior surgeon died. said i will not operate because he is my son senior surgeon can be grandfather no not grandfather maybe that uh, child um, boy is like his son no not like his son maybe he is the son of his brother <coughs> no church father not church father in one of my session somebody said uske do do baap the i said that happens only in movies <laughs> come on young minds out here how many of you are here 50 order the answer is in front of you you guys are young 20 21 don't worry even my <laughs> doctor <laughs> i'm challenging you fellows come on if you can't give this answer presentation kya karoge Come on. Should I tell you? Should I tell Please, you the answer? Yes, sir. The chief surgeon was his mother. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> the moment Very I said chief surgeon, you thought it was a male. Huh? Yes, sir. See what life does to us. to inspire people to embrace change first of all you have to break something called perceptions you have you had made a perception that chief surgeon has to be a male but don't you know ladies lady doctors i'm sure you have been to many of them or met many of them that's the beauty of perceptions my friends you're stepping out into the young world now at your young age into a world if you go with perceptions in your mind about organizations and people life is going to be very difficult so whatever perceptions you have in your mind just clear them out because perception does not equal to reality it does not good example it's a very good example sir just work on it sir why this thing did not strike our mind at the right moment why because of perception i associate yes sir a doctor with a male mostly yes sir because our mind has been psychologically conditioned and a good presenter knows that how to psychologically condition the audience which i just did with you you know what is psychological con conditioning it is have you seen yes. you no know, i'm sure you've seen you know in temples uh, in south india uh, there are big elephants standing outside yeah and that yes. if you look closely that elephant is tied to one pole with only a rope you think that elephant can't break that rope the huge fellow and go away why doesn't he do that perception sir 
that he can't go from the true ha uh, where did that perception come from because when he was a child right from his english when he was a baby when he was yes, a baby sir. calf he was tied to the same pole but this time with a chain and a small baby couldn't break the chain so he'll go around in one little you know circle and he knows that i can't move more than the circle so in his mind he has created that circle of perception that i can't go out of here and as he grows up to make sure that he is aware that he is tied they just put a rope and tie it to him but his mind has got psychologically conditioned that is a danger most presenters fall into when they go they make up in their mind and they say oh my god this audience is all senior people they are going to really make my life miserable you formed your perception do you think your presentation will go for us will be successful no my friends it won't be namaskar in my mind i've made the perception right i associate and i make perception i see a guy on the road you know you know uh, looking like a rowdy i make uh, you know you know gold chain and this i make a perception and say oh oh my god this guy is one rowdy let me move away from him but he might not be that's just his appearance because 10% is like the iceberg effect only 10% is what you see is above the water 90% is below so in presentations if you have a good presenter has no perceptions that's why he can present to any audience anywhere in i am bangalore i was called to present to a group of aspiring women politicians my god when i told my wife my wife said are you crazy aspiring women politicians what are you going to teach them i said why let me learn from them no and i went and had a good time enjoyed myself there quite a few of them are pretty friendly with me even today some of them are much more senior than me but yeah as a presenter do not keep any perceptions in your mind because if you do then your presentation will go dish it will tank okay now how do i embrace people to inspire people to embrace change so let me tell you a personal example experience rather you know about what uh about 30 35 years back when we were in college and i was in calcutta and uh, in calcutta those days there's something called huge power cuts used to happen they were called load shedding and we actually had to study with a lantern and all that even though we used to be staying in good apartments and all that you know and there were no generators and all there hardly and even the, if there were generators they were very 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 expensive So in the evening, when power cuts used to happen around 6:37, and 6:37 becomes dark in the eastern part of a country, uh, so all of us used to meet in the lobby of the apartment, and you know, same age guys and uh, girls, and we used to sit and talk and you know, chat and all that. So one day when we were sitting there, suddenly we heard a loud explosion, boom, and a lot of glass shattering and all that happening. so being young guys we said let's see what happened and we ran towards the source of the explosion and we see in one apartment the uh, apartment is on fire and one lady comes out screaming from there tot- totally on fire and she co- comes and collapses at her feet and says save me save me so immediately we tried you know call a cab and took her to the ho- tra- tried to take her to the hospital on the way to the hospital however she died then we came back and we found out that there was a small little kid in that apartment and this lady was the maid of that of that house who was to take care of the kid and the kid of course was dead you know why this happened you know why this happened this happened is because there was a power cut and the maid had gone to the kitchen switched on the candle and went close to the gas forgetting the fact that she had switched on the gas 5 minutes back to do something and the gas cylinder exploded 
Now, my friends, tomorrow, as you grow up and get a family and uh, have children, or if you know of people who have children and part of your family, my sincere request to you is to tell them not to leave small kids in care of maids, because safety of our family is utmost important for all of us. So please, please spread this message across. It's very important, especially in times like this. Thank you so much. What? What happened? What did I just use? Why the silence? No, sir, we were listening to you. I use the example, I use the action, I use the benefit. See, in the same presentation, I used the magic formula twice. But did it impact you people? Of course it did. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know? Of course. So you see the power of the magic formula in presentation. It's very, 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 very powerful. Perceptions are dangerous as a presenter. Get out of them. Use the magic formula. Use whatever we shared with you. Create an impactful presentation. Because you are the presenter. Any questions? Come on. Come on, come on. See, this is what I did. I present in a result-oriented way. I persuaded an action, audience to take action. I offered reliable, verifiable evidence in form of a personal incident. I was motivational, clear, and concise. And I communicated in a convincing manner. Did I follow the steps? All of them? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Before we close, you know, I have time for about three, four questions on presentation. Please feel free. Go ahead. Anybody, any question? Uh, sir, in future, I can go for jobs like that. If we get a chance to present in front of our like seniors in the office or organization, organization, right? Uh, we might feel a little bit scared, sir, because of their positions and all those things. So at that time, how should we, we need to be confident, sir? See, you've already and made a uh, Now where we are presenting, we are presenting in front of students, sir, students which are students. all our, our classmates. But when we go for the uh, yeah. organization, something like that. I understand we'll where you're coming from, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. It's but natural to happen. But that is a perception again. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. So, so yes, sir. Uh, suppose you get hired in HUL, Hindustan Unilever Limited, and you're asked to present to a group of area managers. And uh, you're just a you know, management training. Now, the area managers work for Hindustan Unilever also. Do they? Yes, sir. The area managers work for Hindustan Unilever also, no? Yes, sir. You do also, no? Yes, sir. So what is the difference? They Nothing. also work for Unilever, you also work for Unilever. Simple. Yes, sir. Get that in your mind. This concept is called, I am OK, you are OK. Oh, now, okay, sir. In the beginning of my career, when uh, I had the same doubt, and um, I started my career in sales 
and I had to go and meet gel managers and CEOs because the product I was selling was a high value product, which is about 1.25 lakhs 32 years back. So I was very, very nervous. My boss called me and said, you work for Xerox? I said, yes. He works for his company? I said, yes. He said, you represent your company. He represents his, his company. Where is the difference? That to me was a penny dropping moment. I said, wow. I never thought of it like that. He represents his company. I represent my company. So where's the difference? We are on the same field, level playing field. And that moment onwards, I could go and meet anybody, anywhere. And that happens even today. Some of the CXO said, Sudeep, you are too much man. At any point of time, you pick up the phone and call. I said, yeah, because I have something for you, which is valuable to you. The moment you start talking language like this, no, I have something for you, which is valuable to you. Immediately you start saying, OK, tell me more. OK. Any other questions before we start wrapping up? Yes, sir, I have a question. Yes. Yes, sir, in your long career, at the beginning, probably you have faced uh, or come across some of the failures. What is your biggest failure and what did you learn from it, sir? My biggest failure was uh, in one government contract, which was for a huge number of machines, I did not read the fine print which says, which had said, Proforma invoice to be attached along with the tender. I didn't read it. And that time, no tenders used to come in newspaper. You have to cut it out and keep it. Right? Okay. So, Obviously, because we didn't send the pro forma invoice, our tender, my tender was rejected. The biggest learning for me from that moment is go through any document in the corporate world or wherever in life with a magnifying glass. Read the fine print, every single moment, line of it, and then only take your decisions based on that. Even today, I do that very much. And I'm... I'm sure with my experience, if I'm sharing this learning with you, you will start doing it now. Because why reinvent the wheel? It's always better to learn from others' mistakes than make your own mistakes, right? Yes, sir. Answered your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. OK. All right. As we are wrapping up, let me tell you a story. I love telling stories. You like hearing stories? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. The story is again about two monks. One elder monk with a lot of wisdom with a, and the younger monk with a lot of intelligence. Again, this one young monk this time wanted to teach the elder monk a lesson. So he went to the forest and he caught a bird in his hand. A live bird, you know, he caught it in his hand. He put his the bird inside his hands and put his hands behind his back. And he went and stood in front of the senior monk. And he asked the senior monk, Sir, can you tell me what I have in my hand? Now the senior monk could hear the chirping of the bird, so he could make out that he had a bird in his hand. So he said, you have a bird in your hand. Is that your question? The junior monk said, sir, that's not a question. The question is coming to you now. The question is, can you tell me in the next five minutes, the bird in my hand will live or die? Hearing this, the senior monk starts laughing, started laughing, 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 laughing loudly. And he says, son, you put me in a very different, difficult situation. Because if I tell you that the bird that you have in your hand will live, you will crush it in your hands and kill it to prove me wrong. And if I tell you it will die, then you will open your hands and the bird will fly. So this is a very, very difficult situation for me, sir. Now, my young friends here, Presentation skills 
is a bird that I'm living, leaving in your hand. If you want this bird to live or die, it is up to you. So thank you. What will you do with the bird now? The bird called presentation skills. Let it we will live. keep it alive. Keep it alive. How do you keep it alive? By doing a lot of practice. Remember three key words of presentation, preparation, preparation, preparation. And I'm sure the more you prepare, prepare, the more you follow the concept of will, skill, and drill, the more successful in your life you will be as a presenter. And as a presenter, if you're successful, it's not only in sales marketing that you need to present. You need to present every, every in every field, whether it be finance, whether it be HR, whether it be any stream that you follow. Now, my wife is an HR uh, consultant. The amount of presentation she does within her organization is not funny. I said, I wouldn't have done so much as a sales and marketing guy myself. She has to present to business, she has to present to finance, she has to present uh, to uh, CXO. She has, and uh, since she works for an IT software company, her work starts at, you know, at about 9.30 in the morning, goes up to about 2, 2.30 in the evening. And out of that entire time, I think 80% of the time she's presenting something or the other. I went out just now and I said, what are you doing? She said, preparing a presentation. I said, congratulations, keep it up. And she's a senior HR person. So presentation in the corporate world is the key to success. Good presenters are have the opportunity to go up the value chain faster than the others. And this I have experienced myself and I've seen it myself. I've seen better presenters than me who have, you know, gone up the value chain faster than me. I've seen worse presenters than me. I've gone up faster in the you know, value chain than them. So that's how it is. So I've been there, done that. Hence, I thought I'll share my experiences with you. How was the session? It was very informative, sir. And is it practical? Yes, sir. A lot. Yes, sir. Very interesting, sir. Yeah. So I'm sure we learned so things. many things, sir. Yeah. Good. Like Good. especially for perceptions uh, that we should not keep. Yeah, we should not keep perceptions at all. Perceptions are a killer, you know. Okay, so I am done. Anybody has any questions? You can. My coordinates are anywhere there. Uh, Yadav, sir, you would like to say something? Yeah, yes, sir. Actually, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, regarding uh, this presentation, in your PowerPoints, uh, the animations and the special effects uh, are they required or not, sir? Animations. See, uh, no, an overkill of animation and. Uh, uh, you know, what is that? Animations and, you know, I have seen presentations where there's too many animations. Overkill is, I would suggest you can have about 25% of animations. 25%. Right. Okay. Because uh, I personally feel these animations and special effects in the presentation, uh, they're a distraction. Yeah, they okay. are. Content is, the, uh, content is the content is the king. So I just yeah. wanted to know your opinion. Absolutely. So okay. about twenty five percent is good enough. I don't right. have any. I never use animations in my presentation. Done, sir. Fine, sir. Uh, students, do you, any other students have any doubts? Any questions to sir? Okay, I don't think so. Okay, sir. Thank you so much uh, for your. Pleasure, uh, sir. Invaluable time. Uh, we have spent quite a lot of time uh, uh, sharing your skills that you have learned over your uh, over vast expanse of your experience. And we really appreciate that from uh, MBA Bangalore University Department. Thank you. And so thank much. you very much, sir. And under normal circumstances, uh, we'd like to have you in person uh, yeah. for a live uh, session. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank
we thank do. you so much thank you thank you that's all of you all the best in life thank you sir thank you sir thank you bye thank you sir bye, bye.